Oh, okay. All right. We're back. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Pop It Off podcast. Uh, I took a bathroom break after the end of the last podcast, but I'm back now. I'm back. Um, Damn, three dude, months I, in the bathroom. I'm, yeah, uh, I ate Chipotle. Uh, that's why I prefer Halloween candy, but. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Also, yeah, Taco yeah. Bell. Lethal combination. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, food. What happened? Food. Oh, there should be in context first. Oh, wait, no. Introduce yourself. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Tyler, by the way, if anybody's watching this uh, on my channel, Tyler Mitchell. I'm that guy. But uh, this is Aaron. He took a long shit, apparently. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wanted to be comedy. Probably yes. comedy, maybe. I mean, um, we're how many episodes into this podcast? This I'm is, sure we probably know. Yeah, this is episode 23, I believe. Um, we had a little bit of a three-month hiatus for several reasons, but we're back. And hopefully, you know, maybe we can put out one every couple weeks or something, you know. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, like also, the anniversary episode, technically, because we didn't, we didn't do a podcast on the year anniversary of the show. That's right. So this would be this is be this is year two. Can you believe it? Oh my god! Um, <laughs> I'm talking for years now. Yeah. So yeah, this will be uh, fun catching up because I'm sure you know. Like I said, three months. There's a lot that happened. So um, although like if the viewers are listening, that like we don't just like not talk. Like, oh yeah, we we talk we we talk all the time, but yeah. we just mm-hmm. do we just don't record it. Yeah. Exactly. So. so yeah. Um, so real quick, uh, we're recording this at my time. It's two a.m. <laughs> and then your time, it's eleven yeah. p.m. So yeah, we're yeah, not gonna be we're doing a late. Night. Yeah. yeah, we're doing a late night episode today. But I feel like despite that, we're gonna end up talking for a bit. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because me, I'm yeah. on nocturnal mode right now. Like uh, I'm, I'm up at this time anyway because my new job. Um, and I was gonna mention too the reason why we're recording this so late, even though it's my day off, is because I was gonna tell you. So earlier I, I had uh, Arby's and uh, <laughs> I went into a food coma. So that's what happened. Um, yeah, it's just I don't know what it is. I'm actually somebody that really likes Arby's. You know, Arby's. Yeah, is, I do too. Yeah, yeah they, they get a lot of shit sometimes. People are like, oh, Arby's is disgusting. I actually really like it. What's and like your main, what's your main order there? Okay, so I I'm a big Reuben guy. I love a Reuben, so I always get a Reuben. Um, the Smokehouse brisket's pretty good. Um, I always, today, I always get that brisket sandwich. Yes, it's delicious. Like seriously, like it's really good. Um, and today I had uh, the beef and cheddar, which I think I've had that before, but I'm pretty sure that's what knocked me out. Like I don't know what it was. I had two of them. Um, yeah, man, I went to a food coma, so <laughs> I was asleep for a couple hours, and then when I woke up, there was a new uh, Better Call Saul. Watch that, and then I had to go to the gym. Like I said, if I didn't take that food coma, I would have went to the gym earlier. But you know, we were talking like, hey, we could do the podcast, and I was. I was actually on my way out of the gym when you messaged me. Um, when you messaged me, like, oh, can we do it at 10 or, you know. So I just got back. I ate my dinner and now I'm good to go. So, yeah, um, that was fun. <laughs> so I don't know what it is about Arby's, though. Like last time I had it, I remember I went into a food coma also. So I don't know. Maybe they put something in the food. I had Arby's like two nights ago. Oh, so. really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although you know what, it, it's very hit or miss. It, like one item will be very like really good, and then uh, like I've had things where it's kind of kind of butt. Like yeah. I I had these wings there, and usually I never I never get buffalo sauce as anything, but mm-hmm. they were like that was the only option: buffalo sauce and super spicy. I'm not much <laughs> of a spicy guy, so I was like, okay, I guess I'll try the buffalo. I'm in their wings, and they're they're honestly terrible. Like I wouldn't recommend it. Really, but like. Yeah, but I kind of had a feeling because I was like, I never ordered this before, so it sucks. I just, like, I bought another sandwich, like, just for the side in case. Yeah. I was like, oh, if I do end up liking it, I can just save this for the morning and bring it to lunch or something. So I'm glad yeah. I got an extra. It didn't totally suck, but yeah, no, those, that was nasty. I ended up getting a milkshake <laughs> with it, which is also nasty because, like, literally, like, I, like, I had it the milkshake literally sitting next to me as I'm eating and like legit 10 minutes later it looks like there's tons of bubbles like it's carbonated like almost like it looks what? disgusting really yeah what, I'll, what flavor I'll try to... it was vanilla carbonated what the hell <laughs> I wouldn't say it's car- it just looked like I had a ton of bubbles or like foam on top of it after That's... sitting for like 10 minutes which was wow. weird I'll try to find a picture I yeah I took a picture I'll try to send it to you if you can put it up maybe but I'll oh for try. sure <laughs> yeah 
I was going to say, because the Jamocha shake there is really good. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, but their meat sandwiches, like their basic sandwiches are pretty good. So I'm not, I'm not yeah. just Arby's. Yeah, but I don't know what it was. Like I said, the last time I had it, um, I went into a food coma, and then this time I went into a food. So I don't know what's going on with that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know we're gonna talk about Doctor Strange and all kinds of fun stuff. But I actually wanted to like catch up real quick. So how's how's life been for you? It's been it's been life. <laughs> yeah, you still at the same um, uh, job at the grocery store, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, things get better. Oh yeah, I ended up switching. I got I got transferred to a new location. Okay. Uh, it's consi- it's more like the bougier one, so <laughs> it's a lot nicer. Okay. Uh, yeah how how is your government? Are, have you done any Florida government work yet? <laughs> yeah, so um, you know that's a lot. Um, I don't even know if I'm like really allowed to say like everything I can't. Like okay, so I'll give you guys like the basic gist of what my job is. So I I'm just gonna flat out tell you I work inside a jail. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is a big step up from Burger King. Um, and I got to tell you, I'm actually really liking the job. Um, I work with a lot of great people. The The jail I work at is, there's one or two jails I could have ended up at. And this one is a lot better um, than the other one. So I'm very fortunate. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm the new guy. So, like, I have to work my way up the totem pole, basically. Like, see, everyone's got seniority over me. So, like, you know, um, they do this thing called bidding, which they do every year, which like, if you want a different post to work, you can bid for, you know, so I'm, I might be stuck at night shift for a long time, but I'm actually really enjoying it. Uh, the job itself is, you know, it was a lot, it was a lot at first, but I'm getting so used to it now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun. You know, I'm working with inmates, which is, you know, unpredictable sometimes. Um, but I'm not, I'm not actually like a deputy or anything like that. Like I'm a person that like assist the deputy if that makes any sense like um i'm what's called a technician so like basically like i i help run the control room like i open the doors like you like i don't deal with inmates one-on-one basically but yeah yeah um but you know it is a lot you know it would take forever to explain everything but that's the basic just about it you know um i don't want to reveal too much like i said like i don't know what's classified or isn't you know it's it's not that yeah. serious but like you know what i mean like i don't yeah. know yeah i'll just ask for all the classified stuff like <laughs> privately um sure yeah. did how did how did you get this like like I, did you think you know what i want to work inside of a jail like how did this opportunity so, kind, of, kind of come to you again uh i'm i'm you know, I, I explained to you before like private like i'm a private person so i'm not going to say too much about this but my dad works for the same company he's worked there forever and he didn't yeah. get me in he just sort of like recommended to me i couldn't even put him as a reference by the way which was like what okay Like they literally said, you can't list any family members, which is, or any former managers, which I was like, what? I couldn't put a former manager as a reference? That doesn't make sense. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, he basically like said like, hey, if you do it, you get a pension. It's a great career. There's great benefits, you know, and it's true. Like there's tons of great benefits and the pay is pretty good for the job I'm working. Um, So yeah, it's my first real job. And, you know, it was, like I said, a huge step up from Burger King. I'll tell you that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, have, have any inmates tried bucking with you yet like have they have they approached you, know, you or anything you know it's funny like i haven't seen anything wild yet but i've heard some crazy stories which i won't say here i could tell you you know in our messages if you want okay. whatever okay. but uh yeah it, it, some of them try to mess with you you know like they'll because you you talk to them over the intercom if you you know if they want to speak to you for something and man th- there's been some guys that have been really annoying but most of them for the most part are very well behaved you know um because they don't want to be there you know what i mean they just want to do their you know they want to uh if they make bond or if they you know they go to court maybe they can you know uh whatever like they can, they have a possibility of getting out of there some of them are going to end up going to prison but um most of them just want to get out of there so thankfully nothing crazy happens that often i have yet to see anything crazy i've only been there a couple of weeks but yeah there's been a few guys you have full access to to all the floor demands so Yes, that's another thing. Uh, going into this, it's like, yeah, we're in Florida. So it's like, got some crazy guys probably. But, you know, I they, they said, you know, I could look at every one of their charges, like what they're in there for. But they said, like, don't do it. Because if you do that, you're going to like look at these guys like in a different way. You might be intimidated by them or something. So I purposely don't look at to see like what they did. Um, but, you know, I just treat them all the same, basically. Like they're all, you know, I treat them like humans, obviously. But like, there's guys that are in there for worse crimes, obviously, but I, you know, like I said, I don't want to look at it. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So basically, if I go to Florida and commit crimes, then I'll have someone on the inside to help me Shawshank Redemption my way out. That's you know enough. what's you know what's crazy. There's literally I, I really couldn't like. There's no way someone could escape from there. Like I actually thought about that. I'm like because they actually told me a story about how somebody tried to do it once and they actually got like decently far, but there's no way they could actually make it out of there completely. Like there's just no way. So, like, you know, in the movies, obviously Shawshank takes place in, like, the 40s, so it's different, different technology. But, like, there's no way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's a Stallone kid. Yeah, right. <laughs> Escape <laughs> plan. Yeah. I have that on Blu-ray. <laughs> there's, like, four sequels they made. Yeah, know. right. Like, <laughs> I haven't seen those ones, but I don't, me neither. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't, I don't think I will at any point. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, they're making Expendables four right now, which is interesting. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. I like the first two. The third one I didn't really care for, but the first two I really liked. So. Um. um so three hundred sixty-five days of movies. Um. Oh, <laughs> dude, I was gonna tell you that. So real quick, actually. So since we're catching up. I was gonna say, like, let's look at each other's uh, lists, and like, if you want to discuss a particular film, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, okay, so I'm bringing this up because we're talking about like, you know, now we're back in movies. Um, yeah. but I mean, last time we we kind of talked, you had mentioned how you were going to try and watch yes. a movie every day, but you know, if you've watched any of your recent reviews and stuff, you mentioned that you got this new job, you haven't really been able to do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Like, I guess that's, uh, like, I'm kind of telling the audience for you, but yeah, you, you haven't really been, like, you kind of, I wouldn't yeah. say you failed it because you did get pretty far and, like, you still are, like, adding to it. But Because here's, it, yeah, here, here, yeah the, here's the thing about it. So it was way easier because I was unemployed for a while because, like, I left Burger King back in July, which is crazy. That was 10 months ago. I can't believe that was 10 months ago. Like, oh, my God. Anyways, yeah. uh, I left in July. I did Uber Eats for a little bit. Um, and then I literally just said to myself, because the hiring process for this job took forever, like, dude, forever. Um, I just said to myself, you know what, when I start this job, it's literally a career, like I'm gonna have no free time. So I might as well just stay unemployed for now. And uh, so I stopped doing Uber, Uber Eats, you know, I mean, I was making a little bit of money off of YouTube, obviously, you know, like a little bit, but I just said to myself, I'm just going to be unemployed for a couple months and enjoy it. Because when I go work, it's going to be five days a week, 40, hours, you know, like, I'm not gonna have much free time. So I said to myself, like, hey, I could try this thing or I try to watch a new movie every day because I have all this time. And it worked. I literally made I think. What did I tell you? I think it was like 83 days in a row without missing one, um, mm -hmm. which was crazy. Like, I ne obviously never done something like that. So I'm still going to obviously add to that list every time I watch something. But, you know, it was fun while it lasted, you know, because literally I cannot do it right now. It would be impossible. Um so yeah i'm glad you're you're trying it though like that's really cool okay. Here, here's here's my thing um i once you told me that you were doing that i don't think any, i don't think i've said it on the podcast i i don't think i was doing it yet right um so you knew about it and people who follow me on letterbox know about it mm -hmm. if they check my list constantly uh but yeah no i started i started it too i, I tried to do what you were doing and at, after like three days i was like okay i'm not gonna be able to do it like that <laughs> um so i was just like all right well what what i'll do instead is i'll do 365 days of movies so i'll try to watch by by the time i i, I logged in my first movie of the challenge by a, exactly one year from that moment i will try to have at least watched 365 movies Right. So it's like a movie a day, except I'll just like I can watch two movies a day, I can watch no <laughs> movies a day, as long as I'm I'm caught up with it. But even then, that's kind of failed. Um, like I I've completely fallen off. Like I just things have been so busy. So yeah. like I literally like I'm like two months behind. <laughs> worth of oh movies. wow! <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm like I'm literally only like I, I only have 29 right here. What that's was your day like one? A month. My day one, like what do you mean my day one? Like what was the first day you started? It was March 5th. March 5th. Okay. So if I do the so, math, yeah. 27 of March, 30 of April, that's 57. Today's the 17th now. Or let's say 16th. So 57 plus 16, 60. 73, maybe, if I'm correct. Oh, yeah. So you should be at 73. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a bit. 
I'm a bit behind. So now I'm kind of like, all right, I'm just going to log every movie that I, I watch in the 365 days, but like that's literally just Letterboxd. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I'm still adding to the list. Uh, I mean, do, will I get 365 days my next year? I doubt it, but I'll right. try. But, you know, it's, it, it's, it's something. I mean, yeah. I, at least I'm trying. Exactly. It's good because, you know, for years, especially as a Blu-ray collector, I've had tons of movies for years that I've never watched. So, yeah, like, that, finally. That's, that's been the most satisfying thing about yeah. this. I've been finally able to just watch stuff that I've just kind of had in the backlog. And I'm just like, no, I'm finally going to watch it. So now it's like, you know, now my, <laughs> my, my, my movie list is like, I mean, my movie shelf was like, yeah, I've seen that. I can, like, because that, that kind of became an inside joke between me and my cousin. He'd be like, oh, have you seen this? I'm like, no. Like, why do you have it? I'm like, I, I'm going to watch it. And mm-hmm. that's for like 30, like I have like, li- like legit, like 30% of my questions like, that I haven't seen, but I just have. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad I can talk. I can finally, uh, that, that stereotype of me not watching movies I own, I can finally kind of, kind of cross that off. So, <laughs> um but yeah we uh we can de- we can definitely go into uh to our lists um and kind of we can give like you know we can talk a little bit about each one we don't have to go like full you know yeah review because i might take that that will literally be like a 10-hour podcast yeah so it would take forever i was gonna say <laughs> we're gonna be talking all yeah. night no um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so like you like pick a few like a few handfuls like so i'm looking at your list um first one i noticed is the nicholas cage one i didn't see that I didn't see it. The unbearable way. Okay, you know what? okay, you know, okay. Here's what I'll do. I'll I'll start from the bottom so people get know what I've seen, but I I, I might not like talk about everything, or I might give like one or two words, you know? Okay. Because that's only twenty nine. I mean, you can you can do yours different, but I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure people want to know what. I've oh seen. no no! I was thinking we'd look at each other's list and ask each other about movies we didn't we don't know. Like I didn't see the Nicolas Cage one, so I was going to ask you about that. You know what I mean? Or would you rather do it your way? I don't know. Cause, like I don't know. Like maybe people who don't follow might like want to know like what you watch so like if they know i don't know okay no no <laughs> your your way actually sounds pretty interesting because you're like you're gonna go through them and like oh, okay i got you yeah go ahead and do that way that sounds cooler okay so okay so i'll start at the very bottom like uh, the way this works is you know obviously on top we have the best movie that we've seen so far right at the bottom we have the very worst <laughs> song so of i'll the start at the bottom <laughs> yeah song of the <laughs> song of the south um for those of you who don't know, uh, um, this ride Disneyland at Splash Mountain. Uh, yeah, no, what am I talking yes. about? The ride Splash Mountain at Disneyland is based off the movie Song of the South. And if you don't know what Song of the South is, it is the banned Disney movie that they forbid <laughs> anyone from watching. They forbid mention, like, they're literally changing the ride at Disneyland to, like, a... Uh, um, Princess and the Frog, I think? Princess and the Frog, yeah. It's yeah. Princess and the Frog themed. So they don't have to... They can completely wipe it from history. Yeah. However... There are obviously people who have the movie, they have put it online. And, you know, I was like, I was interested because I was like, okay, like, I know it's going to be bad. Obviously, if Disney's trying to hide it so much, but like, I kind of want to know what exactly, like, is behind the characters on Splash Mountain. Like, I kind of wanted to watch it for history, you know? Yeah. So I watched it and uh, <laughs> yikes. Yay. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, this movie is, is very racist um i know people are like (laughs) if you go on the letterbox for it like it has like a common rating of three stars like that's the highest which Mm -hmm. i kind of feel like are people trying to like be like oh no it's not that bad we're trying to cancel the history of it whatever you know people uh (laughs) but yeah no it's like like the movie starts off with a bunch of people on a plantation slaves singing and dancing songs like they're having the time of their life like (laughs) like uh this movie it's okay that's like the beginning part. People are like, oh, you know, the rest of the movie's not like that. It's about like animated characters. Even then, it's not interesting. Like mm-hmm. they're like a movie, like the movie follows this 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 little boy. He's very annoying. He's very boring. <laughs> like he's he's not that entertaining. Uh the animated bits, uh, you know what? I'll give it this. For the time it came out, the animated bits look very crisp. Like like that, like the, the characters are nice okay. designed. Like it's good animation. Yeah, it's just what the animation is kind of associated with. It's kind of, <laughs> it's, it's it's not good. Uh, so that's why I have it at the worst because it is a, like not just a crappy movie, but it's also very very uh, very racist and you know, wow. I, like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't give a good movie review 
to a movie that's like unironically racist. <laughs> um, but that just might be me. Uh, next up, Slenderman. I mean, everyone knows how bad Slenderman is. Like, legitimately, I thought it was like a made for TV movie because it's that poorly filmed, <laughs> that poorly put together, and that poorly acted. Like, like Netflix the original movies seem like they're more produced than Slenderman was. Like, I couldn't even believe that. Like, it was like, <sighs> a legitimate movie that released in theaters. Um, yeah, Tom and Jerry. Uh, I know this one is a bit close for you. You're a big Tom and Jerry stan. You have yeah, but only old, Jerry. only old Tom and Jerry. Anything past like the '90s is just shit. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, this movie. You know, it's. I feel like if if I was a kid, I'd really like it. I feel like kids would really like it. Um, it's it, it makes it, it, okay. It makes no sense a lot of times. Uh, it has a lot of stupid moments. Uh, but you know what? I give it's it's not terrible. Like I know people like are acting like it's the worst movie ever. <laughs> not bad, but like you wouldn't. Unless you're a kid, you wouldn't really want to watch it. Like, yeah. you know, like it reminds you of like Minions or something. Or like Except Space the only Jam. problem, you, you, oh, I mean, Space Jam. I got, <laughs> you know what? I kind of like Space Jam. But, oh, okay. <laughs> point aside, uh, you know, it's, I, I do wish it kind of focused more on Tom and Jerry because it doesn't really, like they're, like, they're part of the plot, but really, like, towards the end, like, they aren't even like, like literally Tom and Jerry aren't even important by like the end and like how it concludes. I mean, a little <laughs> bit kind of sort of like they lead to what happens in the third act, but like legitimately like they aren't like, there's no arc for them really. But I mean, it's Tom and Jerry, like they just kill each other. Like there's no really arc you can do. I don't think maybe, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, I've said, you know, I don't know how many times because I mean, I, you know what? You could skip it. Your kids might like it. I own it on Blu-ray forever. So yeah, right. <laughs> um, next one is a controversial one. It's the Adam Project. It's like an it was a made for Netflix movie, Ryan Reynolds movie, uh, from director of Free Guy. Um, I just found it super forgettable. Like it has like it's funny, but like it's just very like literally the plot is stupid, makes no sense. Mm. It's very forgettable. I mean, it's stylized and it's like not like the worst Netflix movie I've seen. It just I yeah. guess it just wasn't for me. Like. I mean, everyone's funny in it. It's just, I, I just think it has a stupid story and it's mm-hmm. like very just boring, kind of forgettable. Um, Silent House, which is an Elizabeth Olsen movie. Mm. Um, basically, the gimmick is that the whole movie is one shot. You know, it's kind of like oh. one of those movies. Uh, and like, it, it really is seamless. Like, I'll give, I'll give it that. Like, you, like, I mean, I'm sure I can probably pinpoint where they might have put a cut in mm-hmm. uh but it is very like it's like it really does seem like one shot um it, it, it's very like it's done well the only problem is the movie isn't scary mm-hmm. and the majority of the movie is her kind of just walking around this creepy old house and it's like there's a mystery to it so like the third act like it's the most interesting it's the best part of the movie because it probably like, kind of reveals things but like not like 80 percent of the movie is just like slow you don't like it's not scary so like you're kind of like a little bored i mean elizabeth, elizabeth Olsen kind of carries this movie for the most part but i mean she's like literally the only person in it besides like two other people three other people sorry um and it, it is very low budget you can you can you can you can tell uh just, just from the like the, the opening like the way it's shot the way it's put together it's it's very low budget so mm-hmm. Like I can't really, I can't really like blame them for not going a little bit more of the top because we probably like didn't have much resources. But it's just, eh. Like I own it on Blu-ray as well, but like I mean, I don't know if I'll ever fully go back to watching it. But you know, I'm I, like I'm not bashing it. Like yeah, I, I'd say I'd say mm, I don't know. I guess maybe a one-time watch, but it's it's not. Don't expect to have your socks blown off. It's it's not scary at all. Um, then we got Moonfall. It's Moonfall. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty okay. You know what? I'll give it this. Like it, li- like I like Tyler. Like you think Moonfall is going to be a destruction movie? Like just a typical destruction movie? Yeah. Like I kid you not, dude. This goes. This movie goes into a direction you literally will not predict. Like 
hmm. there, like there's a twist in this movie or like something is revealed and you're like seriously like that that's where this movie went like that's the reason <laughs> like no like no fucking way this movie did that like no <laughs> so honestly i kind of want i kind of want you to watch it because like okay when, once you realize like where where it's going with the plot you're like no like no no way like yeah. seriously <laughs> uh, so like i was like literally like my reaction when things are kind of like revealed i'm like m- literally my job i was on the floor i was like dude <laughs> like what the hell like and, and like it's dumb but you know what i ha- I'm, I'm i'm gonna admit it. i have fun with it like it's not it's not great the the reveal was very like what the fuck but you know what i also own this movie on blu-ray so i you oh know I, i'm not even I'm not even complaining. Like, uh, it's a, it's a it's a you know what? it's a cool one time watch if you watch it with like friends or family something just one night like yeah yeah you gotta yeah, stop I, buying I kinda, every movie you see <laughs> yeah you need to stop that. Um, <laughs> next up is the, uh, the movie Mid-Bious. that swept the nation. Morbius, <laughs> yes. Um, Tyler was a very big, a big defender of this movie. Uh, he's the biggest fan of this movie. <laughs> um, I made it. I, you know, it's surprising. I actually made a video about this. Like, I actually released a, a YouTube video for once, and it was about Morbius. And uh, if you watch the video, you will see that I, uh, I definitely had an experience watching Morbius. Um, Wait, you put out a video. I didn't, I didn't even know. Yeah, you like, dude. I, I I literally showed you it. Like, I sent it to you. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure. I'm pretty because I'm not recalling that. Hold on. I may. I was like, I remember. I sent. Yeah, I sent you a message. I was like, I actually had to put out. You know, I had to put out a video for April Fools, and you laughed. No, I don't even see your your latest video on your channel, what? French Dispatch. Yeah. You don't see it. No, it says French Dispatch is your latest video. What the fuck? Oh, wait. I realized there's a copyright claim on it. Oh, I don't even know if I watched it then. Oh, shit. Hold on. Let me see if I can share it to you. Because it, have... it, had, it had... What? I was going to say, does it have views on it? Like it was published? Yeah, 25 views. Oh, no. I, know. I don't even know if I saw that. Maybe I did. I just forgot. Let's see. Going to watch Morbius. Yeah. Does it, does it load? It says this video contains content from SME, who has blocked it in your country on copyright grounds. Oh shit! Okay, it's all right. Well, now I know. <laughs> yeah, Sony? I didn't. I didn't realize. No, okay, I didn't realize it. But yeah, it's been copyright claimed, so you guys can't watch it. I'll fix that and I'll re-upload it if I have to. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think I know why. It's because I I literally don't care and I don't think I'm gonna make money off this channel, so I just like use regular music. And I think that kind of actually got me this time. Um. But yeah, no, I made a video uh, going to watch Morbius, and uh, it's uh, it's definitely you know I th- you know I think Tyler might have better words to say about it, so I'll wait for <laughs> Tyler to talk about it. But uh, yeah, it was uh, Morbius. I- I'll put it at that. But right now, wait, wait, what, wait, what do I even have it at? I don't, even, I don't remember the stars I have it at. Three. Uh, let me see. Oh, I have it at three stars. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of my my quick thing. It, it, it's a, it's a three star movie right now. That's kind of me being like generous, like as generous as I possibly could with this movie. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, don't look up. Uh, I know you have this at like what, like four stars or something like that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you four have, stars. Yeah, you have it at three. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan. I, can't, I don't know. It didn't really feel like it had that much kind of. I think okay. The thing, I think the biggest problem with me for this movie is that it didn't feel like it was a movie. It kind of felt like more like a commercial almost. Like it didn't mm. feel like it had like a director's voice, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was alright. I mean, I, <laughs> I watched it because I was trying to watch. I was trying to watch all the best picture winners last year. Right. Not winners, nominations. Yeah. I didn't get to. I, I think I'm missing two of them. Um, one of them I actually bought, and I think you're gonna like love hearing this. I actually bought the Steelbook for Nightmare Alley. I have watched Ooh, it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, don't look up. It's all right. Uh, on top of don't look up, I have Batman Forever. That might be controversial, <laughs> but I kind of like that. Like you know what? I kind of rocked with Batman Forever. I was like, mm. I, I've never seen it before. I don't know if I'm going to be into this. I liked it. 
I think the worst part for me is I hate Two Face in the movie, but like you know what? <laughs> it's super dumb. It's super cheesy, but I kind of like, I, you know, I can I I dug it. Like I I liked it. Um, yeah. I know you were as big a fan. I I can see you gave it two and a half stars, but oh you know? uh, yeah, no wait. Let me cut you off real quick. So. It's been a minute since I've used Zoom. I just got a message a couple minutes ago saying we have 10 minutes left. There's a 40-minute limit unless I upgrade to Pro. Like, what? So we might have to no. we might have to end this meeting and then just start a new one, and then obviously I'll just edit it together, obviously. Um, so that's weird. Yeah, we have eight minutes left. There's a timer. I don't know if it's on your side. Do you see it? Uh, no, it just is that like I'm being recorded. Interesting. Yeah, like it literally okay, says so- – all right, I'll finish my review of Batman Forever and then we'll move and then we'll cut it. And we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll cut back. All right. Uh yeah, Batman Forever. Uh clearly you didn't like it that much, but I liked it. I mean, it's I only gave it three stars, but you know, it's not bad. I, I, I kind of <laughs> like uh what's his name as uh, Batman? Val Kilmer. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it has its moments. It's very over the top, but I liked it. Um <laughs> So yeah, I guess we'll do a quick cut and I'll do the second half of this list, I guess. Yeah. Sure. I'll try to speed run it next time because I feel like I've been talking too much. So yeah, no, I was gonna say too, if you you don't have to speak about every single one, like maybe the ones that stood out to you, good or bad, you know what I mean? Um yeah. that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna speak about every single one I did, but yeah, let me um yeah, let me just end this one real quick and then I'll invite you again. Okay. Cool. All righty. All right, we're back. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I, I was just, t- I've been, uh, I, I'm already off to a great start. Uh, no, <laughs> I've been talking so much because, uh, I feel like my list is so random and like all over the place. <laughs> I thought people need explanations, but I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to reduce my talking. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, next on the list was Dread. I own that on 4K, uh, cool movie, Friday Night Lights. Then I got Inherent Vice. The movie confused the actual hell out of me, but you know what? <laughs> I enjoyed the direction and I, I just enjoyed the vibes. So that's why it's uh, I give it four stars. Oh no, three and a half. I think it gave three and a half. Um, next up was uh, Fantastic Beasts, The Secret to Dumbledore, more of a more, more of a recent release. Uh, it's a massive upgrade compared to the second one, which mm-hmm. sucks. Um, it's actually my favorite of the three of the trilogy. I think this is definitely the best one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's actually pretty good. Like I actually like uh, the new Grindelwald that they have um, over Johnny Depp. Um, the story I thought was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I actually recommend it. Okay. Um, massive, it's, it's massively better than the second one, which I was extremely disappointed by. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think you'd like it, Tyler. Um, yeah, I actually kind of like the second one. I don't know if I'm weird, but I only watched it once. So. <laughs> yeah um then sonic 2 uh you said you watched the, the first one right like didn't you talk yeah, about it here both now. Yeah. oh yeah yeah i know like sonic 2 is pretty great uh yeah, it is yeah the third the third act is literally cinema mm. um <laughs> very cool very much like the games i had a great time watching it in theaters like it was, it was it's such a like it's such a fun movie like <laughs> I, I can't i can't wait to get it on 4k like it, it's it's really cool yeah, um it's really i fun. actually really recommend it uh turning red uh, a little bit overrated i think but still a very solid movie i really mm-hmm. enjoyed it I, I just you know some people are like oh it's like masterpiece when i'm like i wouldn't i wouldn't go that far with it <laughs> um i'm not like a turning red hater but you know yeah. I, I i literally still have it here i'm like as like what do i have it four stars uh, i think yes right yeah. yeah four stars which is obviously great uh so yeah it's, it's a very solid movie um, no time to die. This is actually the uh, the second James Bond movie I've ever seen. <laughs> um, What's the other one? I've seen Skyfall. Oh, okay. So I own this movie on Blu-ray, so I was like, I'm gonna watch it. I have no idea what's probably gonna be going on, but I'm just gonna <laughs> jump right into it. And I actually really liked it. I was like, dang, this is pretty good. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know what other people think of it, but I really enjoyed it. Did you cry at the end like I did? I didn't have that much connection to James Bond, so oh, no. Oh yeah, you should watch I, I, all five. Yeah, I did have feels though, so I feel like if I if I watch the other ones, it, it might hit me more. Yeah. Um, King Richard, uh, it was a GI Jane joke. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, we're very, we're, we're very topical here at uh, Pavanov. Mm. Um, yeah, this movie is very overshadowed by that Oscars moment, but like legitimately, it's a, it's a great movie. Like, it is really good. I, I I wasn't expecting much, but it's it's really solid. Crappy behavior with that movie, but it, it's really good. Um, mm. I, I highly recommend it. Um, West Side Story, Steven Spielberg, of course, you can't go wrong unless it's Ready Player One. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, West Side Story, really good. X, A24 movie, mm. and you've seen it. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's such a crazy movie. <laughs> um, I can, are we allowed to talk about spoilers? Like, I feel like it's been long enough. Are we, are we allowed um, to? Yeah, sure. And real quick, I wanted to ask you, since it is a spoiler, anyone listening, just skip ahead or whatever. Um, yeah, there was a post-credit thing. Did you know about this? No, I didn't. So, okay, they're going to make a prequel film about Pearl, the old lady, and they no, they already no shot it. And they're, they're going to make a third movie, too, apparently. It's going to be A24's first franchise. And they already shot it. And they had a trailer for it after the credits, apparently. And I did not know about it. And I was so pissed. I didn't know. Dude, I didn't even know that either. Yeah, it's crazy. Holy it's going to be called Pearl. I, okay, I definitely need to go watch the Blu-ray or something. I, I mean, watch yeah, next, the movie again. To see yeah, it. the Blu-ray's next Tuesday. But the digital release doesn't have it for some reason. I heard people say that. Huh. Yeah. Dude, I did not know that. I hope the Blu-ray has it because I did not see the trailer and I'm I was or, really you know, it might it might be a special feature on the Blu-ray most likely I'm assuming yes, maybe so. yeah yeah I didn't I didn't know that but I mean I, I was gonna say like the scene where she she murders the dude with with like how, I forgot how she murder him uh she oh the, the first, first guy murder, that got killed guy. yeah she like cut his throat yeah. open and stuff yeah that was crazy yeah and then she just starts dancing to that music with like yeah. that red lighting on her that 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 dude that scene like <laughs> it dude like man this movie it's insane <laughs> yeah like oh yeah and you see kid cuddy's dick like, oh dude crazy. it's like 10 inches long <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <sighs> um yeah this movie it, it's a, it's very highly recommended for me i know you recommend it yes um yeah, it, it it's such a great time at the movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess you, you could say it's cliche a little bit, like how events turn out. But you know, I don't care. Yeah, I, I'm down for a good slasher movie, and this was this was really good. <laughs> um, I'd say the one was there any kill specifically that kind of like jarred you, like or you're like, damn, I can't believe they actually they, they, they went there. Honestly, that first kill that you mentioned, that was pretty much the one that was, like, the most shocking. Like, it, the other ones were just, I, would, I wouldn't I would say tame, but, like, just pretty standard for me. Like, that first one was pretty brutal, I ain't gonna lie. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, it was a great time, though. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit, too, on my list. But, yeah, I highly recommend it. We both gave it four stars. Yeah. Uh, then the movie uh, you wanted me to talk about, Bearable Weight of Massive Talent, mm. uh, the Nicolas Cage movie. It's so funny because you you finish watching the movie. And it's like it's one of those movies where over time you're just like, yeah, that was that was good. Like okay. I watched it, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. But then like the more it just kind of sat on me, I was like, okay, that was that was pretty great. That was really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's very funny. Uh, it's very like it's not generic. It's very original. Like it's just it it's such a great movie. Uh, I can't wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. Like I I cannot recommend it enough. Mm. Uh, it's basically what it, what it's basically what you expect. Um, <laughs> just Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal just being like crazy weirdos, and it's awesome. Okay, um, yeah, there's action in it. It's very funny. It's you know there, your stuff you don't see coming. It, it's great. Um, <laughs> Red Rocket. Uh, this was a blind buy for me, uh, but it's a twenty four. So obviously, I was expecting it to be good. And it mm-hmm. fucking was yep. such a great movie. Uh, what the ending was a bit like controversial for people. I don't know how you felt about it. I know it's on your list. Um, yeah. What you, do you think of the ending? <laughs> um, well, the so the guy that made that he made a Florida project. Have you seen that one yet? I, I've seen the trailer for it. I haven't seen it though. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, that one also had like a weird sort of artsy fartsy ending, and you know. It, it is what it is. I sort of expected it, but 
it's sort of like you can interpret it one of two ways. Like, did it happen? Did it not happen? So uh, it was whatever to me. You know, the whole movie's great, though. Like you said, it's just the ending might be a turnoff for some people. But yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't like too like jarred by the ending. Like, honestly, yeah. the movie kind of like it concludes. It's just that ending, like, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, but I, I saw a review and it, it literally perfectly described this movie. It's literally just a GTA cutscene, but like real life. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's very funny. It's just very all like what the fuck. It's it's great. Like right. I'm so glad I went and got actually watched it. Mm. Um, Coda, which oh my god, yeah, loved it. Mm-hmm. I was literally rooting for it for best picture. Uh, after watching like majority of the best picture nominations, I mean, I don't know, maybe Drive My Car, Nightmare Alley, but I can't remember mine, but that was my favorite. Coda was, mm-hmm. um, it's it's phenomenal. Like that, I was I was shocked. Like it was it was really good. Yes, um, I know that one's on your list as well. It's great. Like it, it, like I can't like it won best picture. <laughs> like I can't exactly. recommend it enough. Yeah. Although I mean, you have an Oscar contender that is at the bottom of your list, so. But we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> later on. Um, oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Coda, <laughs> fantastic. Re- watch it. It it it's really good. It it, it tugs on the heart strings. Yes. Um, Cloverfield. Matt Reeves, uh, director of the Batman, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is great as well. Uh, it, it it's also another one of those things I kind of watched and I kind of had to think about it. And I was like, yeah, I yeah that's definitely four stars for sure Mm -hmm. um it's just i I, you know i've obviously i've seen the parodies i've seen all the stuff about cloverfield but i I never actually watched the movie like you know what happens um i didn't even realize fucking what's his name was in it uh with uh tj miller oh yeah he's He's a camera guy yeah (laughs) expecting that um can you still hear me by the way can you hear me yeah it went mute for a second i noticed but no you're yeah 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 Yeah, okay um yeah uh you have four and a half stars like mm-hmm. it's it's great like yeah. I, but i'm pretty sure like how wait when this movie come out let me see 2000 uh 2008 yeah i'm pretty sure most people have seen it uh great movie uh 10 cloverfield lane is good too but like yeah watch cloverfield and the most recent movie i watched uh i watched this two i think it was really two years ago ghostbusters afterlife mm-hmm. um dude like I don't think they could have done this any any better. Like that's what I said. If I were, like if if I wanted a modern Ghostbusters movie, like this is it. Like yes, I, I think they're making another one, I believe. But like yeah, I think yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, this is like like this is it. Like this is like all, all I could have wanted. Like it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like the way they incorporate the classic characters. With spoiler alert, but. It's a Ghostbusters movie. If you want to watch it, you go to see it already. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I barely got to it, but yeah, like, dude, I literally got like very emotional towards the end. It's just the way they incorporated it all. Oh, yeah. Cast new characters. The story, I guess you could say it's kind of like it pulls a Force Awakens. It's very similar to the <laughs> first one, kind of, but I don't care. I had a fucking blast with it. I liked all the characters, except for, you know, I, one little nitpick was a. I was like, podcast, despite us being on podcast, got a little annoying at times uh, to me yeah. a little bit. <laughs> uh, but other than that, all the characters are really good. Uh, it's it, a man. This one, it got me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're like, I'm not even like a gigantic Ghostbusters. Like, I obviously I like Ghostbusters, but I'm not like you. Like, like I, I couldn't even imagine being with you watching this movie. In oh, dude. Probably. I... <laughs> You know when you ha- when you have to like cry really hard, but you're like holding it in, like you don't want to let it out. That's what I was doing. Yeah, like you're like sure, um, like you're like whimpering at the lips or whatever. Like that's what I was doing because my sister and my mom were there. I didn't want to like start being a baby, so I just like held it in. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was an experience. Yeah, definitely, definitely recommend this one. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's the Ghostbusters movie that you definitely would would hope for. <laughs> Northman, uh, why did you spill your beans? The latest Robert Eggers movie, and it is phenomenal. Uh, I don't think you've seen it yet, have you? No, I have not yet, but I really want to. It's over the top, like, it's just like the most, like, the most bizarre revenge movie you'll ever see. 
Uh, Willem Dafoe's a fucking weirdo in it for like a couple of <laughs> minutes. He's in, he's in it. Uh, they're like, dude, like I can't even. I can't even talk about it. like just. It's a Robert Eggers Viking movie. Like, mm. or, no, not Vikings. I'm sorry. Is it like I, I don't even fucking. Know. It looks just, like Vikings. Yeah, I don't know, uh, dude. Like, just watch it. <laughs> yeah, like it's <laughs> it's very reminiscent of the Lighthouse, the Witch. Like, it's. It's great. It's, okay. You can watch it and you'd be like, yeah. Yeah. This, this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can describe That's it. Like, it, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll, if you know, you know, I guess. Okay. Part like eight. Yeah. Right. Whatever. I, guess. It is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I already know you're going to end up loving you. You're going to end up being like, you're going to, I can already see it. You're going to end up DMing me being like, <laughs> Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> it's just like, like I literally had a smile on my face because I'm like, this is just so much like the lighthouse where it's just so many moments where you're like, bruh. Ooh. Okay, like, good. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it's as like, biz- like, it, okay, I won't, it's not as bizarre as a lighthouse, but mm. like, it, it's more like a classic revenge movie, but it's just as far as they go and with like how crazy it gets, it's very, very like mythological. It, it's, it's an experience. It's de- you know what? It's an experience. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, the Edge of Seventeen. Uh, this movie, like, I think is the honestly, like, you know, Netflix has their teen high school movies, but like, no kid ever acts like that. I honestly, mm-hmm. like, legitimately, I think this movie is the most accurate like depiction of high school like there is. Oh, okay. Like, as someone who's been in school, like school, like I could, like literally like two or three years ago, graduating from high school, like I think this is the most accurate depiction of it. Like it felt so real. Like I felt like I was back in there and I hated it, mm. uh, but that made me love the movie. Uh, um, it's a great coming of age story. It's very simple, kind of straight to the point, very short, but you know what? It's, it, it's a great movie. Like it, it's so hard because you can talk so much about bad movies, but with great movies, you're just like, yeah, that's good. Like what else, what else am I supposed to say? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah very funny uh the characters are great the story's good it's classic coming of age uh, I, I highly recommend it okay um, then is everything everywhere all at once um everyone's giving it five stars everyone's calling it one of the greatest movies ever made i don't think i'd go that far but right. obviously i have it third on the list uh it is great like Mm-hmm. literally i started tearing up from a scene where two rocks are talking like uh. <laughs> it, this movie like I, I i literally like this movie is something that i feel like everyone should see at least once like it Absolutely. literally like it, i know it's probably gonna end up at some point being like a like a classic honestly like it's like it's gonna be studied it's gonna be mm-hmm. talked about um but it's just it's just a mess. Like it's a movie that I feel like I needed to see. Like, I feel like it's something that everyone should see. Yeah. Um, the messages, what it's about, like the way it's done. It's just so crazy. It's so just what, like, what am I watching? But it's honestly <laughs> one of the most like down to earth, like heartwarming movies I've honestly seen. Um, it's great. Like, I, I, obviously if you look like all the reviews are praising it, like believe the hype. It's, it's good. I wouldn't call it like, you know, one of my favorite movies ever made, but it, mm. it's an I, it's it's an important movie. I think people should definitely go and check it out, and support yeah. it. It's a twenty four. Uh, I don't think they. have I mean, I know the directors made uh, turned down for what music video, but I don't think oh, they and, made uh, like they made a Swiss Army Man, which I never watched. I hear that movie. I hear that movie's good though. Yeah, like yeah, not like not like crazy big famous directors. So I recommend highly. I highly recommend supporting this movie. Um, people complain that there's like never any original movies, but like <laughs> you know, with movies like Unbearable Weight, Massive Talent, The Northman, Everything Ever All at Once coming out, like obviously still being made, and yeah. they're great movies. So I highly recommend this one. I'm definitely they're actually going to be releasing this one kind of like the Green Knight, where it's 4K and mm-hmm. it, like Blu-ray. So like I'm obviously going to buy that. Uh, and yeah, like just just watch this movie. Like it's <laughs> it's man. Um, and then there is there will be blood. 
Um, this was Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I watched, the, okay, spoiler, Doctor Strange number one. But before I had, I watched Doctor Strange, this was like number one for like the longest time. And despite it being like my number one and me giving it like, I think I gave it how many stars. I got four and a half stars. Yeah. Uh, despite it literally being almost a five star movie, I didn't like, I didn't plan on watching this movie. I literally was like up at like 12 o'clock at night just scrolling Netflix. And I'm like, oh, this is Paul Thomas, Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I mean, it, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. And it literally ended up being like amazing. Like, <laughs> dude, like I was like, oh my god, like this movie is fun- like phenomenal. Like, <laughs> I keep saying like a lot, but I I don't know how to like, dude, it's so good. <laughs> it's I, I, okay, like it's not obviously it's the story isn't like you know it's not this complex like thing i mean i guess it could be but like I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, i'm really at a loss of words, lost like, for words I, yeah. I, I, yeah i was just so surprised by this movie like, i was just like wow like this was good like really good <laughs> uh I, I was just super invested with it i never felt it was you know too long or if it was too short i felt like I, I was never bored like i was just like man like i just like I, I just kept wanting like to see what happened next and the ending was great i mean the the, the title was there for a reason um which i like I, compl- I completely forgot about the title and then it happens i'm like oh yeah that, that that's why this movie's... <laughs> it it's you've seen it right have you seen it no yes um Please. i've sort of seen it but not really like i remember i watched like the first 30 minutes of it once but for some reason i never finished it and that was like years ago so i don't even remember like yeah i I'm, I'm familiar though like with what happens at the end though like i know what happens there the milkshake thing but uh no i know it's a great movie i definitely need to watch it though like you're saying yeah it has the riddler in it so obviously yeah exactly <laughs> cinema um but yeah i i was genuinely shocked because i like i just tur- i just randomly turned it on and ended up being like literally mm-hmm. almost a five-star movie for me which i don't just hand out freely yeah. um I, although i will like i have twilight at five stars so i guess i might say something about <laughs> me but uh, yeah uh there will be blood obviously it's a classic for a reason most people consider it like one of the best movies one of the best paul thomas and movies like yeah this movie mm-hmm. is a master class at filmmaking like it, <laughs> it's phenomenal and then number one dr strange in the multiverse of madness that <laughs> might that might be the hot take of the evening yeah uh me and you definitely got some words for it but i'll save those for when we have our full dis- our, our full mcu discussion but mm-hmm. yeah that's my list uh, i might have talked way too much but you know what <laughs> it's it, oh well my list is so over the top and random that <laughs> yeah uh so yeah tyler i guess it's your turn yeah so let me uh i'm gonna pull mine up real quick let me pull it up and follow along yeah which by the way follow 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 us on on letterbox because yes you can, you can keep up in real time <laughs> all right so all right so my list so far has 92 it's crazy to think i watched 92 movies this year and we're only in may it's like what the hell um all right so number ninety two is Crash, and oh my god! Talk, you got to talk about Crash. <sighs> I literally took the time to write a review for that, and I I don't I just leave star ratings usually, but oh my god, this movie was so pretentious. It's not even funny. Like, I don't know what the Oscars were thinking because um, back in what year was it? Two thousand five, I think. Oh, two thousand four. Um, Brokeback Mountain came out that year, and everyone thought that was going to win Best Picture. I've never seen it, but I hear it's a great movie. Obviously. And for some reason, they decided to give it to Crash. I think maybe because they weren't about, you know, the gay stuff, or I guess, because back then it was different. It's not as, you know, uh, accepted as it was, as it is today, obviously. Um, yeah. So that was the reason why they gave, they just handed it over to that movie. And everyone unanimously agreed, like, that was the worst Best Picture winner ever. And I always, for years, wondered, like, okay, this movie can't be that bad. I mean, if it won Best Picture, there's got to be something good about it, right? And oh my God, it's, it's literally, it's not like hard to watch. It's not boring. It's not like, 
you know, like, oh my God, I want to rip my eyes out. It's not like that. It's just the movie literally treats you like an idiot. Like it, the dialogue is terrible. It's, oh my God. <laughs> like I, I watched it a couple months ago. So like, I'm trying to recall, but like, there's literally lines in the movie that like literally like talk directly to like what the movie is trying to say. Like it's, it's not subtle at all. Like it's just, it's really bad. And the performances are okay. It's just, it's, it's literally the, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like you watch the movie and it's just like frustrating. Like when it was over, I'm like, really, that was it. Like, I can't believe it. Like this Paul Haggis who uh, wrote million dollar baby, which I love that movie. But this one, I don't know what he was doing. Like, he just literally, I don't know what he was thinking. Like, it was, it's terrible. Like, it's, it's the worst movie I've ever seen. I literally gave it half a star. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you just have to watch it. I don't want you to watch it because it's so bad. But, like, if you ever do, you'll see what I mean. Like, I think you'll agree with me. Watching it now. Yeah, I watched it on Hulu. I don't know if it's still on there. But, uh, man, I, I'm never, I'm never watching that again. That's for sure. <laughs> it's writing. It's been since you would tank the movie yeah it it was it's terrible um and then before that i have twilight which you know i know you're a big fan destroy you so okay here's the thing uh i i had a i I sent you a picture like there was like a streaming service that was like playing all five twilight movies for free i was like oh i might as well watch them now and man i this movie wasn't for me like i could see okay when did it come out 2008 i think yeah so in 2008 i was 12 years old Maybe if I saw it then and I look back on it now, I'd have nostalgia for it or something. You know what I mean? And I, if I watched it as a kid, I might have liked it more. But like in my current state of life and the movies I like, this was not it for me. Like something about it just felt very MTV ish, which is OK. But like that was never my thing. I was never like an MTV kid. Um Kristen Stewart's OK in it. Robert Pattinson's OK in it, too. There's certain like, the, <laughs> like, like I was going to say, like, the script for me, the lines are not the best. Like, that was the killer for me. Because I know they're both great actors, obviously. Um, and it was just very, it was, just felt very cheesy to me. Um, again, I don't mean any offense. Like, if you like this movie, that's totally fine. But for me, like, it was not my thing at all. Like, some of the shots were cool. I'll give it that. I like the look of the movie. Um, but, man, it was just, for me, I was not enjoying any minute of it, to be honest. I mean... I don't know. Some of the the effects with like the vampires were cool, I guess, but like, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Like, you know, I didn't hate it. I gave it two stars, you know, which is better than zero, obviously better than crash. Um, anything's (laughs) Anything's better than crash, but, um, I can see why people would like this though. Like if people said it was like a guilty pleasure, I could totally see that. You know what I mean? Like I've got guilty pleasures, but like for me, if you, if you think it's legitimately good, that's totally fine. You have your reasons for it. it. It maybe you can associate with it more, whatever. Um, but me, like I said, it wasn't my thing. But uh, I'll let you do your counteract. So go ahead. Let me hear what you have to say. I think it's the yeah, I'm watching 4K Ultra HD. I think, that, I think that's the problem, man. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, okay. So I, I kind of told Tyler, this movie to me is, I, it's very much like malignant in the way mm. where it's purposely, if you read the source material, if you read the book where it's it's based off of, it's very like this one it has style to it. Like that movie, like the book, it's very it's it's very similar. Like she has no emotion, mm. it's very cheesy, it's very corny, the line delivery is over the top. But with this movie, they I've heard that they kind of just embraced it. Like with the search material that they had, they kind of just were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just going to make this the exact same, but we're just going to like <laughs> max. We're just going to over the top the hell out of it. So when you watch this movie, if you view it the same way, you know, you would view malignant where you just, it's purposely made like that. You just enjoy, you, you enjoy it so much more. Like it's literally in my top 10 favorite movies because it's so like, it, it just okay first off it embraces that like just 2000s feel of it which is so like fucking mm. which i grew up with so that might also have some bias like i like yeah. I, I was super into like the emo like punk goth fucking 2000s shit <laughs> um mtv type stuff um so i already like have nostalgia for that vibe but also it's just the fact that they like they just like they go there like they don't care they're not trying to make you know 
fucking the next uh, Oscar winner. Like they're just like, you know what? We're just gonna have a fun time with it. Like I, I, I could see James Wan making a movie like this. Like it's just, it, it's just over the top. Like the line delivery, it's just, it, there's no way. Like they wrote that, but they did, and they <laughs> delivered it like so. Just like, like literally, where when she gets introduced, when she first sees Edward, and he's literally like covering his nose, like he, like his performance is just wow like and and the sim like the <laughs> and the, like they literally have the the wings of the bird right behind him to symbolize him being like an angel like that's so stupid but it's so cool and so funny like it like they don't care like they're just like yeah we did that like mm. Oh man! And then you know, jumping through the trees, like, come on, like that—that's that, literally cinema. Like, it, it's they it reinvented cinema. And, and and when when she confesses to him that he's a vampire and it does this stupid three sixty camera movement and it's all intense, it's like you're you're a vampire. It's like, dude, this is awesome. Like, you can't get any better than this. So it just embraces the camp. It, it's very like it, it's very James Wan and Sam Raimi. Like they just like and totally just embrace the campiness. Mm. And I was I was so down for it. And it's why it's why it's in my top ten favorite movies. It's like it's just it's what I it, it, I don't know. I guess it, 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 obviously if you're looking at it as like a serious movie, you're not gonna like it. Like Tyler said, like everything he said yeah. is valid. If you're looking at it from a serious standpoint, it's stupid over the top. Uh, the performances are mid. But that, like, that just that makes the movie. That literally makes the okay. But I uh, something I legitimately do like do like is the soundtrack, like both the music and the score. Like I fuck with the heavy. Um, I mean, at Paramore's in the soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, they like have like emo piano going on throughout the whole. Like, dude, this movie's made for me. And Come to California. I'm gonna make you watch the saga. Oh god. Um, it's <laughs> yeah, dude. Like I love this movie. Like so what I, I don't know. I guess yeah, you, like it wasn't for you, but you know. Yeah. It's for I mean, me. I'll, I'll say this though. Movies are an experience. If you can have a great experience uh, in a movie, regardless of how like you know objectively good or bad it is, then that's you know, that's what it's all about. Like for you, it's a great experience to watch, obviously. So like it being in your top ten, I don't I could never in any universe see this being in my top 10, but for, for you, I could totally see like, okay, you really enjoy the experience of it and like how it embraces its campiness or whatever. Like I get it. I get why you like it that much now. So, um, Oh, are you still there by the way? Yeah. I'm oh, oh, okay. Okay. No. Cause I, the audio was going in and out a little bit. I don't know what was up with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No, but, uh, yeah, I totally see it though. Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, I'm glad I watched it though, because for years I was always curious about Twilight and I finally watched it. Like I said, like for years and years, there's all these movies I've wanted to watch. So, um, and obviously for you, we could talk about it. Cause I know, you know, you love it so much. I wanted to see like, what was it all about? Um, but man, I, I don't think I'm ever going to watch the sequels to be honest. But like you said, if I ever do go to California and you're like, Hey, we should watch them. Maybe I'll do it. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Commentary. Yeah. 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 Something. Um, by the way, we got our little running out of time thing going again. Uh, seven minutes left. So um, if you want, let me just cut off here and then let the recording save. So, yeah, everybody listening, we're going to go to commercial break again. <laughs> yeah. Manscaped. Um, Manscaped. Yeah. All right. So let me uh, cut this off. Yes. All right. So, everyone, we're back from commercial break. Um <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the rest of my list, but I'm not going to talk about every single one. If there's one I skip that you want me to talk about, just stop me and let me know. Um, so I'm going to talk about ones that, like, stood out. Uh, again, either good or bad. So uh, the yeah. next one I'm, I'm going to talk about is Midbius, and I did a full review for that, mm -hmm. everybody. So if you Talk want about this one. Talk about this one. Yeah. Um, if you want to know my full, like, thoughts and a full review, go check that out. Um, but I will say – now that I've sat with the movie for a little bit, I think I would lower the score from a seven to probably like a five or a six. Again, I haven't watched it again, but like, man, like you're so right when you say this movie is the epitome of mid, like 
my God, <laughs> like there is nothing special about it. It's not, you know, I, I did give some praise to Matt Smith. Like he's, you know, he's okay in the movie. It's just, everything else is just literally. So a dance good. sequence. Exactly, dude. That's literally the best part. Um, <laughs> man, I, I don't know what Sony was. You, sk- you, you, you skipped lots of movies, by the way. You skipped three. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of movies on here. Again, if you want me to talk about any of them, like, just say which one. Oh, I thought you were going to, like, say the movie and then talk about a specific one. Okay. Okay, I get you. I get you. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like, I'm going to talk a little bit about specific ones on this list. But if I skip over any that you wanted to hear about, just let me know. Uh, you can cut me off. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, Midbius it's mid so <laughs> um yeah i want to watch your little video you made about it though like i, I really want to see what that was um man i don't know uh, i you know i did pre-order the steelbook i don't know what that says about me but uh you know you gotta have them all. <laughs> I, I probably will get it too <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's the thing <laughs> oh my god so yeah i don't know all right so next ones i'm going to talk about are cars two and three because i always heard about how the car sequels sucked and i never seen them before yeah this is this is surprising because cars 2 is considered like the worst pixar movie yet you have cars three. here's the thing i liked okay so i didn't think cars 3 was bad by any means it's just i liked cars 2 more because i didn't know it was actually about mater and i don't know why i really enjoyed the story about mater like it was really fun it was a fun movie like I actually really love the first cars more than most people do. And obviously, you know, these don't even compare to them, if you ask me. But, like, I don't know what it was. I found the second movie to be really fun. The third movie was – it was good, too. It just wasn't – for me, it wasn't as, you know, as much of a good experience as Cars 2 was. I guess you could say objectively it's better, sure. But I enjoyed Cars 2 more. That's why I put it higher. Um, How do you feel about those those two? I've seen Cars 1, like, shit tons of time. Yeah, but I, I've never seen Cars two or three, so I don't oh, okay. have an opinion. Yeah, like I said, you know, I I could see why people say this things they say about them. They're not as bad as people say, to be honest. Um, yeah, Cars two, I really I thought it was a really fun movie. I don't know, I'd I'd watch it again. Um, whereas Cars three, I don't know if I'd watch it again, but who knows? Maybe one day I'll do the Pixar marathon or something. I don't know. Um, you have Free Guy like really low. I kind of want to hear hear about that. Oh, well, Free Guy, to me, it was just like a standard movie. Like, it didn't, I mean, there were certain elements of it. Like, I really liked how, I guess, spoiler, like, how they fall in love with each other at the end. Like, I really love all that stuff. Like, that was really well done. Um, Like, uh, you know, what's his name from Stranger Things and the uh, girl? Uh, Like, he revealed, like, he actually, like, actually loved her and she finds out about it or whatever. Like, I really like that stuff. That was great. And Ryan Reynolds was great in it. It was a fun movie. But again, to me, nothing really special. Um, I liked, you know, like all the little Easter eggs in it and stuff like that. And Channing Tatum's really funny. And Taika Waititi obviously is really good. But like, I don't know. To me, there wasn't anything like special about it. But it was it was fun, though. Like it was unique, like video game movie, like a guy like you literally live in a video game world. Um, I'm sure there's other movies like that. But like, I don't know. It was a fun movie. It's just. You know, like I said, like every other movie on this list to me was just better. Um, the ones above it, obviously. So I don't know. Like, Which, uh, I wonder I wonder how Deadpool 3 is going to be because it's supposed to be made by the same guy who made this one and the right. project. So, yeah, Sean Levy. Um, which, by the way, I just noticed we both gave it the same rating, three and a half. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, everyone knows me. I give really high ratings generally anyway. Yeah. So. Which is why it surprised me. <laughs> Yeah, and then to me it wasn't any. It wasn't a four. Like it, it just wasn't. It's a uh, that translates to a seven out of ten for me. Which you know, I know I gave Morbius a seven, but like I said, I think I'm gonna lower that. So <laughs> this is definitely better than Morbius. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so let's see next. Um, the Burbs with Tom Hanks. I was always curious about this movie. This was shot on the Universal backlot in California, which I always love movies that do that, like Back to the Future and Gremlins. This was a fun movie. It's like a horror comedy, sort of. Um, there's a lot of fun moments in it. Um, it's interesting. I thought it was going to be better, though, to be honest, because I always heard, like, it's a great movie. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's definitely a fun time. And Tom Hanks is really silly in it, which is, you know, <laughs> you don't really see Tom Hanks act silly. A lot. I mean, Forrest Gump, he's silly, I guess. But, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, Nomad Land, which won Best Picture. Again, I didn't love it, but the cinematography was on point and the performances were all on point. 
Um, I could see why it won Best Picture. And Chloe Zhao obviously went on to do Eternals, and she's great. So I'm happy she won Best Director for that. Um, I think her dear because I hear that's like a that's a crazy movie. Oh yeah, that movie was something. It's it's one of those A24s that's like super weird. Um, I would definitely say check it out, but I wouldn't. I don't think I'd ever rewatch it. It's it's pretty bizarre. Like everyone acts very robotic in the movie. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Everybody's good in it, like Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman and uh, Barry Keegan from um, uh, Eternals. You know, Barry Keegan's the guy that played Joker in uh, Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's really weird in the movie, dude. Like, it's a very strange movie. I don't know how to explain it. Um, <laughs> the, but the filmmaking's on point, obviously. It's A24. Um, but yeah, I think I watched it on Netflix, so I think it's still on there. Um, yeah, definitely watch it, though. It's definitely something you don't want to miss. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Tick, Tick, Boom with Andrew Garfield. My sister pretty much insisted me on watching this movie because she's a huge fan of his, and she loves musicals and stuff. Um Again, not really my thing, but it was a really well done movie. Um, uh, the performance by him is excellent, and you know if you're a fan of musicals, you'll definitely love this movie. Like, oh my god, it's about the guy who uh, created Rent, um, and it's a really good story. Like, it's very well done. I wouldn't watch it again per se. Like I said, it's not my thing, but it's still a very good movie. Um, this movie House, oh my god, dude, this is a bizarre movie. Let's hear about it. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Uh it's the Criterion uh one I have. Man, this yeah. movie is insane. It's literally like on, it's a movie that's on crack. Like it's an old uh I think it's Japanese uh horror movie. I, hear, I always hear everyone talk about this movie, so that's why I was so interested to hear what you say you've <sighs> actually watched it. It's definitely one of those that sits with you for a little bit. Like it's not it I would yeah, I guess I would say it's scary. I wasn't scared by it, but I could definitely see people having nightmares from this movie. Like, oh my god. Again, it's one of those you need to watch it. I don't know if I'd watch it again, but oh my god, it's it's like it's very shocking. Like, I don't know it. It could be nightmare feel for certain people. I f- I don't know. I feel like maybe you'd have nightmares watching it, but yeah, it's it's really? definitely something. Yeah, dude, it's it's very unique. Like, I'll give it that. It's definitely one of the most unique movies I've ever seen. Um, I don't know where you'd watch it though. Like, I don't know if it's maybe Criterion on their. Uh, I know they have a streaming thing. It's probably on there um yeah okay <laughs> um get on up with chadwick boseman rest in peace he is phenomenal in this movie oh my god he transformed into james brown like it's incredible um oh the movie itself as a biopic is you know it's okay it's pretty standard if you ask me but he elevates it like man i don't know if he won any award for it but he should have um so yeah definitely check that out for his performance alone yeah. I literally considered this one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. Which one? Get on up. Yeah, I fucking hated this movie when I watched really? it. Really? Like oh, I thought it was. It just made no sense to me. Like I don't know because I was too young. It just like the way it was like kind of put together. It kind of was just all over the place to me. And I yeah. just remember like I just remember not liking it. So I, I maybe I need to get back to it with my current film mind. But yeah. I just remember like <laughs> being like, Ugh, this is so stupid. Oh, did you watch it in 2014 when it came out? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think like right when it came out on like Redbox, I I got it. And I was oh, okay. like, this is stupid. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just for me, like I said, standard biopic, but his performance was like incredible um, as James Brown. Like he transformed into him. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, Jamie Foxx's Ray Charles later. That was wow. Um Let's see. Next one I'll talk about is Sonic 2. We mentioned that. It was a very fun movie. Um, I went to see it with my mom and my sister just for fun. Um, and I'm glad I went to see it because it was, like you said, super fun movie. Very entertaining. Tails was the best part, if you ask me. Um, I can't wait to see the next one, you know. Uh, <laughs> and if this is Jim Carrey's last movie, like he says it might be, then, you know, what a way to go out. Because To go off. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, my God. He was so good in it. Um yeah, man, I'm loving these two movies so far. Like, the first one, I liked it. This one, I like even more. So, we'll see. Um, very fun. All right, next. Oh, sorry to bother you. Oh, my God. This is another one. Have you seen this one? No, I've seen the trailer, though. Oh, my God, dude. This is another bizarre one. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, there's something I want to tell you, but it's such a spoiler. But, like, once you see it, it's like, dude. I know. 
I want the trailer shows that he has like a weird voice when he talks to people. No, not that. Yeah. It's it's something much more bizarre than that. Believe me. Um, yeah. it's like when it happens, it's like, what is this movie? Like, it's dude. I don't know how to explain it. This is one of those you have to see it. Um, oh man, Lakeith Stanfield is slowly turning into one of my favorite um, current actors today. And man, he is so good in this. He's hilarious. Um, dude, this this movie, like, definitely watch it. It's it's something. Um. <laughs> All right, next I'll talk about, let's see, Upgrade, which was by Lee Winnell, um, the guy who directed the Invisible Man remake, and he's James Wan's pretty much best friend. They worked on the first Saw movie together. He played uh, Adam in the first Saw movie. Um, he directed this one, and it's a really good movie. The action is incredible. Um, the main guy, he's basically, he looks like Tom Hardy. I forget his name. Uh, what's his name? Logan Marshall Green. He's really good in it. It's very like a uh, film noir. It's like a sci-fi film noir movie. It's it's really cool. Um, yeah. It's set in the future. Have you seen this one? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Um. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's really good action though. Like that's the best. The biggest standout for me is like, oh my god. Um. Yeah, again, a lot of people are calling. It. What's up? Oh, I was saying, I was on his filmographer, and apparently he's doing a remake of Escape from New York. So, Really? Oh, interesting. It says, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know they were making one. Okay. Huh. <laughs> yeah. But Lee Winnell's a great filmmaker, though. Like, the Invisible Man remake, I don't know if you saw it, was really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, next, I'll talk about Don't Look Up. Again, this is a mixed bag for a lot of people. I could see why a lot of people don't like it, but I could also see why people, a, lot, a lot of people do like it. And for me... It was a very fun movie. Like I had a great experience watching it. Um, but there are yeah. problems in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> again, I still don't know why I got nominated for best picture. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But you know, Leo and Jennifer Lawrence were amazing in the movie. Like I really love their characters. Um, and uh, Timothy Chalamet, and you know, there's a lot of people in it. But um, I noticed you gave it three stars. I gave it four. Yeah. Um, how'd you like? I think you mentioned about it already, but. Like, what about it did you not like? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it, it doesn't really know what it wants to be. Like, I feel like it, it, it tries to be a parody, but then it also kind of goes a bit serious. So it's like, right. I, don't know, I think it's just not balanced as well. And again, I feel like it doesn't really have, like, heart. I, I wouldn't say heart. Obviously, like, it's a message. Like, the message is clear. It just doesn't feel like it's a director's vision. It kind of okay. feels like it was more of like a kind of product i guess that makes yeah. Sense. yeah yeah like yeah, i shouldn't have a problem with it it just it didn't feel like it was you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was a lot though like it's pretty much like a two and a half hour comedy right it's really long um and it has an ensemble cast and you know there's a message in the movie that you know the movie also kind of tells you what the message is it's not really subtle but like it's done a lot better than crash i'll tell you that um, <laughs> oh god <but> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, definitely check it out for anybody listening. Um, you may or may not like it. I don't know, but I really thought it was funny. And yeah, yeah. Um, best funny. picture though. Yeah. <laughs> um, next is Chronicle, another one I wondered about for years. Um, it was free on YouTube Movie, so I checked it out. And Chronicle was wow. Oh my god, yeah. Michael B. Jordan, Dane DeHaan, and the other guy I forget his name. Um, man, these guys killed it in this movie. Like Josh Trank. Um, I feel bad that you know. He didn't make a good Fantastic Four, apparently. I still haven't watched it, but this movie was incredibly good. Like, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the found footage thing, but the way they did it was really cool. Yeah, like, I think this is honestly probably the best found footage movie, at least for me. Like, okay, I think the way they did it was it just it was it was just cool. Yeah, like, superhero POV. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, it was awesome. And the story arc with the main guy, like the way it all plays out is it's, it's insane. Insane. And the way it ends is insane too. Um, yeah. So next is Pig, Nicolas Cage. I'm pretty sure you've seen this one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was really good. Like Nicolas Cage's performance was incredible. This is a movie that's like, it's the exposition. You sort of have to figure it out yourself. Um, but yeah. It's it's really good though. Like it's the filmmaking in this was excellent. Um, who was the other guy in this? I forgot. Uh, oh, Alex Wolf from uh, uh, Hereditary. Naked Brothers Band. 
yeah, Naked Brothers Red, yeah. <laughs> um, and Hereditary and uh, Jumanji and all that. Yeah, he's really good, too. Um, he's another one of those current actors that I'm really turning into a big fan of. Um, but yeah, people, check out Pig for Nicolas Cage giving, you know, great performance. <laughs> he wants his pig. Um, <laughs> he really does want his pig in this movie. Yep, that's for damn sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so next up is Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. You know, the guy who made The Godfather, Apocalypse Now. Um, this was super good. Like Gary Oldman plays Dracula. That's That's all you need to tell me. Um, this is one I've wanted to see for years also, and I'm glad I watched it. Uh, Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves, fun fact, actually got married when they made this movie because they didn't know they used a real minister during the marriage scene. So that's pretty funny. Um, but man, the filmmaking in this, again, really good, and it's very, it's a very uh, graphic movie, very violent and bloody. But uh, man, it's, it's just a fun movie. Like, I wouldn't say fun, but, you know, I'm a fan of this type of stuff. Like, it's a horror movie, so um definitely check it out um yeah it's an divorced interesting take. after this movie what's up did they like, actually have to get divorced after this movie or no like? so it's it's i don't even know if it's like a real thing but like they joke about how they're technically married because they used a real minister during a scene um and the director didn't tell them about it so they joke to each other like hey husband hey wife you know what i mean they're not like actually married but like that's the joke you know um so yeah i don't know <laughs> question but it's all right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so next up is luca again new pixar movie i remember you told me you really liked it yeah um, yeah it was really fun i really it was a very cute movie it was really i really liked the characters and the setting and everything about it um very very eye-popping like one of the best looking pixar movies to be honest um again not one i'd re-watch a lot but like i could definitely see kids really loving this movie um and yeah, it was just a fun movie. Um, nothing too special for me, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Turning Red, for example. I know, you know, it is a little bit overrated, but I enjoyed that one more, to be honest. I, it, it appealed to me a little bit more. I don't know. Um, but yeah, still a really good movie. Um, Scream, I did a review for that. So if anybody wants to see that, check it out. Frozen with Elsa and Anna. Oh, yeah. Frozen with Elsa and Anna. <laughs> Man. This is another one I wanted to watch forever. Man, this movie was really good. It's very simple, but it's super effective. Um, and what I like about it, too, is people trapped in a scenario. It's like you, you always like, you know, when you watch those movies, it's like, OK, why don't they do this? Why don't they try this to get out of the scenario? The movie actually like does every possible way they could get out of there. And they try to like, you know, the movie does a good job of that. Like they actually try every possible solution um so i like that aspect and it is very brutal um in certain parts and the performances you know it's a small cast obviously but everybody's great in the movie and i definitely recommend it um have you seen it yet like can we we didn't clarify we're talking about the 2010 frozen movie yes the uh if anybody's wondering if i'm talking about elsa and anna being brutal um (laughs) yeah the 2010 frozen the original frozen if you're gonna be i watched it I watched it when it came out, not in theaters, but like straight to DVD. I think my parents were watching it. And I just like happened to like come out the hallway and sit yeah. down and watch it. And I was like, damn, this sucks. Like, <laughs> oh, you didn't like it? No, 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 no. I mean, like the situation they're in. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bad. Like, Man, this is it's crazy. But yeah, I, it, it was very, it, like, I remember it. Like, so I guess you can say it was a memorable movie for me. But yeah, it's very good. And like, <laughs> damn like just brutal mm-hmm. yes absolutely um next up is x which i did a full review for again uh we discussed that one really loved it it was really good and i forgot to mention in my review there is a moment in the movie where they do a cover of fleetwood max landslide and i don't know why i forgot to mention that part because that literally was the standout moment for me um i don't know what it was that scene just came out of nowhere and it really affected me i don't know about how you felt about it like they just did a full cover of it. Was it again? It was when they were singing "Landslide" by Fleetwood Mac. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, when they're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just came out of nowhere. Like, it, and it just was. It, I because that song makes me cry. So, like, when it came on, I was like getting emotional. I was like, "What the hell is happening right now?" Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it was beautiful. Like, it was a beautiful cover. So, um, big Fleetwood Mac fan, by the way. Like, my favorite song is "Dreams." like my favorite song of all time so 
yeah, that was really cool. Um, next up, I'll talk about Red Rocket, which we discussed a little bit. Uh, yeah, really good movie. Like, Simon Rex, I know, I'm not really a huge fan of his. I've seen him in, like, Scary Movie 3 or whatever, but, like, he was really good in this movie, like, as the leading character. Um, and Sean Baker, the director. Excellent. What happened? You sound extremely muffled right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just said you see his dick in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's literally yeah. out there. Yeah, it's literally yeah. out there. <laughs> I, I, and, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Please and I got, and by the way, I got a praise too. Like they, they literally, because in this, in today's day and age, everybody's sensitive about stuff. They literally had him hook up with a 17 year old, which, you know, that is the age of consent in Texas or whatever they were at. Um, which, yeah. again, that's a very ballsy thing to do in this day and age. I commend them for doing that in the movie. Literally licorice pizza. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, again, they didn't have to do that. They chose to do that, which says a lot. It's like, yeah, we're going to make the movie we want to make. So screw you. So it's like, yeah, I like when people do that. Um, and I still haven't watched Licorice Pizza yet. I'm going to buy it tomorrow on Blu-ray, which fun fact, I don't know why Best Buy canceled my order. They literally, can I pre-ordered it. They canceled the order. I never got an email about it. I found out the other day. I was like, what? It got canceled. Because I was like wondering why it never shipped out. Isn't that yeah, weird? Yeah, we did get canceled. Yeah, right? They literally canceled it because of the canceling. Yeah. Um, it's so weird. So I guess I'll just go buy it tomorrow at the store. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's very bizarre. I never got an email about it. So, anyways. Although, like, they were like, yeah, the movie's just getting canceled. I'm like, I don't think a movie getting nominated for Best Picture is really necessarily getting canceled. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> So. Um, yeah, no, Red Rocket, it's good. Also, <laughs> I forgot to mention, I forgot to put it in my list. I did watch The Power of the Dog, which in that movie, you see Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch's dick. Just, no, really? Just, yeah, you see, like, the side, I think, from what I remember. Whoa, okay, interesting. <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't expect so, that out of him. Okay. I guess just point, putting that out there. <laughs> All righty, I guess I know what I'm watching next. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so next is Turning Red. Again, I really liked the quirkiness of Turning Red. Like the humor in it was really funny to me. Like it's just over the top. Like when she's crying and the tears are flowing down. Like you know what I mean? Like that quirky, funny. Like her, the she's she has her little group of friends. There's the one short girl that's really energetic. Like I don't know what it is. I like that kind of humor. Um, it was a very cute movie. It was very fun. Uh, great message in there, obviously. And you know, Four Town. Come on, man. They got some hits there, bro. Oh, yeah, banger after banger. Yeah, man. Um, me and my sister are constantly joking about Turning Red, like, every day. She's a big fan of it. Um, yeah, it's a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, the Hurt Locker won Best Picture in 2009 or 10. Let me see. 2000, oh, 2008 it came out. Um, Jeremy Renner, Anthony Mackie, um, they're both in it. And it's a really good movie. It's very brutal. Um, Catherine Bigelow directed it, first female to win uh, Best Director. And it was very well done. Like, it's a very good movie. It's a war movie. So be prepared for that. Um, but it's very good. Like, it was made on a low budget. And it came out. Like, Jeremy Renner is incredibly good in the movie. Like, my God. this His character, like, literally gives no fucks. Like, his character is, like, on the verge of death at all times. Like, any moment he could get blown up. And he does not care. Um, he is, him, him and Anthony Mack are both great in it. But him in particular, like, oh, my God. Um, definitely check that one out. Um, let's see. Uh, what's the next one? I'm kind of skipping a few here. This movie, Eight and a Half, which is regarded as one of the best films ever made. Um, I, I really liked it. I didn't love it. I feel bad saying that because it is a great film, but to me, it just didn't appeal to me. Like it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's a French movie. It's about the making of a movie and the director, like his struggles in life. And it's sort of a comedy, but not really. It's like a dark comedy. Um, it's it's a lot, though. Like if you're a film student, I'm sure you've seen it or something like everybody talks about eight and a half. Um, it's like an iconic movie. And again, I really like I liked it. It's just I wouldn't rewatch it again. I don't know. Um, but it was very well done, though. Like the filmmaking is incredible. Um the characters cracked me up a lot. Um, it did make me laugh. So, yeah, that's eight and a half. I definitely don't want to skip over that because people will kill me. Um, let's see. The Gold Rush, Charlie Chaplin. Again, Charlie Chaplin's 
master, like 1920s silent movie, and it's it's hilarious. You're supposed to play him, apparently. Who's gonna play him? Toby Maguire. Really? Okay. And the new uh, Dame, uh, fucking director of Whiplash, Damien Chazelle. Oh, he's making a movie about Charlie Chaplin. Well, it, it's like it's called Babylon, I think. Whatever. I think it takes place around the time that apparently Toby Maguire is apparently playing oh. Charlie Chaplin. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting choice. Um, and by the way, later on this list, I'll be talking about the Robert Downey Jr. Chaplin. And oh my God, I love that movie. Um, <laughs> but no, the Gold Rush classic movie, first time I ever saw it. And you know, it's it's a silent movie. It's like eighty minutes or something. Um, yeah, it's very it's hilarious. Like all his movies, like crack me up. And yeah, he's a master of silent comedy. Um, no Time to Die. Again, I mentioned this on one of the podcasts before. I cried at the end. And if you've seen all of Daniel Craig's James Bond movies, it's a perfect finale for him. Um, Menace to Society. Very, very good movie. Jada Pinkett Smith's in it as G.I. Jane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one was, it's sort of like Boys in the Hood, but a little more artsy. Um, it's, it's very similar to that. Uh, but again, very good movie. Like it's, it really shows you like the nitty gritty of like, you know, the hood, um, very well done movie. Um, falling down with Michael, Michael Douglas. I really love this one. Um, it's basically about a guy who's stuck in traffic and he just says, fuck this and goes on a rampage. Like, I don't want to say too much. Cause like, I feel the like less, you know, the better, but he is so good in the movie. And the scene at like McDonald's is literally just cinema. Oh, you've, you've seen the movie. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Oh, my God. Um, man, I really enjoyed that one. Joel Schumacher, rest in peace, directed that. You know, he did uh, Batman Forever, your favorite, and uh, Batman yeah. and Robin. Uh, <laughs> so, also yeah. your favorite? Yeah, right. Oh, my God. Ugh. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of Batman, uh, The Batman, I did a full review on that one. Uh, excellent filmmaking. My God, every shot is, like, crafted to perfection in this movie. Like, it is so good. Again, I gave it like a 9.75. It wasn't a 10 for me because I felt like the third act was just kind of thrown in there. Like the final action scene. Like I talked about in the review. But again, pretty close to being a masterpiece. Um, I'm sure if I rewatch it, I might just call it a masterpiece at some point. But yeah, excellent movie. Um, let's see. Next. Um, the Paddington movies. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, you asked me about this too in our messages. Um I always heard about this Paddington Bear movie. Like it's it's like 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, what about a bear movie is like so good? I don't know what it is. These movies, the filmmaking was on point. It's sort of like not Wes Anderson, but like the sets feel kind of like Wes Anderson-y, but it's not like shot like a Wes Anderson movie, but like it has that sort of craftiness to it, if that makes any sense. Like very intri intricate sets, um, like the house mm -hmm. they live in is very intricate. Um, and all the cast is on point. The Paddington character is very wholesome, very fun. Um, they're just really fun movies. Like, I don't know how to explain it. They are that good. Um, this is very heartwarming. So yeah, definitely watch them at some point. Um, let's see. Memories of Murder by, uh, oh, I want to, what's his name? Oh, Bong Joon-ho, the guy who made Parasite. Boy, this was a movie. Oh my God. I'm telling you, like. This man can make some films. Um, this is another one that you watch and it just sits with you. It's like, man, what did I just watch? Like, I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. Um, it's based on like a real life thing that happened sort of loosely. Um, and it's, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just like, um, I can't believe that happened. Like, I, you know, the way it ends, it's like, that's really how it ends. Like, I don't want to say too much, but it was incredible. Like I want to watch the rest of his other movies because my God, um, snow piercer, you know, I know he made that one, <sighs> man, this guy is a filmmaker. I'm telling you, um, <laughs> very good movie. Um, let's see, stand by me coming of age movie. Stephen King never saw it. Um, really enjoyed this one. The way that it ends is very impactful for me. I don't know what it is. Just if a movie can stick the landing, that's a big deal to me. Um, there's like a final line in the movie and it really hit home for me. Um, I don't want to say what it is, but most people probably know. Um, have you seen stand by me? Yes. Yeah. Um, something about, I forget what the final line is exactly, but something about your best friends. I don't know what it was. It just really hit home for me. And it was very mm -hmm. coming of age. I really love that genre, like Sandlot, stuff like that. Um, how do you feel about the movie? 
yeah it's, it's phenomenal like it's great it's yeah and then they, like every character is important they're interesting they're not like annoying so it's hmm. and good messages so yeah yeah and the reason i watched it too is because on uh euphoria season two they referenced stand by me one of the episodes so that night i was like okay i guess i'll watch stand by me because i was doing my movie marathon so <laughs> um that was pretty funny and euphoria it, you know season two was pretty cool I, you haven't seen it yet have you i just part of season one. Oh, okay yeah um that's a great show um let's see monster oh boy this was a movie uh charlie theron definitely deserved the oscar for that one um and they shot around parts of florida for that one which is cool um but it's based on a real life thing that happened which is crazy to think uh definitely check it out though it's it's uh it's an experience i'll tell you that um everything everywhere all at once again i did a full review for that if you want to check that out um on a technical level, one of the greatest films ever made? Yes, I agree, on a technical level. But for me, I wouldn't put it anywhere in my top 100 or anything like that. But it is definitely an experience. Everybody should watch it. And I'm so happy for A24 because this is such a huge hit. And it's great. And it's great for original films, like you said, because this is wholly original. And they knocked it out of the park with this movie. Like, it's, it really is a masterpiece in terms of everything I just said. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it a masterpiece, but like it's, it's a master work. So yeah. Yeah. I'll just say that. Um, Dr. Strange again, we'll talk later about that, but I did a full review if you want to check it out. Um, number one MCU movie now, <laughs> evil dead fanboy <laughs> over here. So that's why um, Coda, like you said, this was emotional. Um, the scene towards the end where she's singing for her dad and he's like holding like uh mm -hmm. yeah like holding her like like up close to him like i i started crying it was so emotional um man such a good movie i'm so happy one best picture um yeah excellent film everybody go watch it um i Tanya, again great biopic marble robbie's awesome in it she did her all her own skating and stunts and everything like that she's incredible in terms of that um sebastian stan's really good in it too uh really good biopic Ray with Jamie Foxx. Oh my God. This is one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. Um, he literally glued his eyes shut to play Ray Charles, apparently, which is insane. And he does his own singing and plays on the piano and everything, like plays all the instruments. And it's, it's a really excellent film. Like everybody's great in it. Um, my God, like seriously, Jamie Foxx is one of the best actors of all time. Like literally, like he's sort of underrated when it comes to that stuff. Cause most people wouldn't list him as like one of the best actors, but Jesus Christ, this man is so good. And he's playing Mike Tyson next, apparently, which I can't wait to see that. Um, my God, seriously, check out Ray. It's an excellent biopic. Um, Snatch, again, I think I mentioned on a couple podcasts ago about this one. Really good movie. Uh, Guy Ritchie directed it. It's got a big cast. Um, very fun. Um, Collateral, love this one. Tom Cruise is excellent in it. Uh, Jamie Foxx, again, is in this one. And again, amazing actor. And again, another Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Chaplin, um, my God, this, oh, this movie was a masterpiece. Like I actually like it more than a lot of the Charlie Chaplin movies, which is kind of crazy to think. I like the biopic more, but my God, Robert Downey Jr. was lit literally turned into Charlie Chaplin somehow. Like he literally was him. Um, it was a very, the movie didn't hold back from anything because, uh, sort of similar to Red Rocket, Charlie Chaplin dated very young women back in the day. This is like a hundred years ago, so things were different. Yeah. Like he would he would marry like sixteen year old girls, but it was legal at the time. And the movie does not shy away from it, and it tells you the full story of his life. And it's very the ending, the ending is so emotional. My God, um, it's it's a masterpiece. Like it is just that good. Um, the guy. Um, from Jurassic Park directed this. The uh, the guy that runs the park, uh, Richard Attenborough, who played, uh, yeah, Hammond. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he directed it. He, uh, rest in peace to that guy, because he made a great movie. Um, next up is Kiss of the Spider Woman. This is a film that uh, William Hurt won his Oscar for. You know, he played Ross in the Hulk movies. Rest in peace to him. He passed away. Um, I wanted to check this out because, you know, the night he passed away, I, I never heard of this movie before and he won an Oscar for it. So I was like, okay, I might as well check it out. Another underrated gem right here. Like this movie hit me on every level. I cried a couple times. Um, 
him and Raul Julia, who played uh, uh, Gomez Adams in the Adams family, he passed away a long time ago too. They're the two main guys in this movie. They're like in prison together. Um, they are incredible in this film. Like their chemistry is, it's insane. And William Hurt's character is actually a gay guy. And you really think he is like truly this person. Like his performance is that good. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's an experience. Um, definitely check that one out. Um, all right, we're going to get into my top three here, but I got to, we have to go to break again. So <laughs> I know I've been talking a lot. Um, did you have any real quick that I skipped over that you want me to talk about? Uh, well, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me, uh, we're just going to go to commercial real quick. This is a stupid Zoom. All right. All right. So we'll be back, folks. All right. All right. So just to finish off the list here, I'm going to go into my top three. Now, these three movies are so good that I'd literally I, I'm considering putting them in my top 100 like they're going to end up in there uh, once I rewatch them at some point. Um, man, these ones really stood out to me. Um, so number three is this French movie called Eyes Without a Face. Uh, Les yeux son visage. Uh, if I butcher that, I'm sorry. Uh, I heard Edgar Wright recommend this movie in a video somewhere and it was it's a criterion release uh well they released it you know as part of their thing but uh I, that's where i bought it from and uh, and i didn't know much about the movie and this movie stuck with me it's still stuck with me like i still think about it on a daily basis i'm not gonna lie to you um it's sort of a horror movie um sort not eh, there's definitely horror elements in it um it's definitely a drama i don't want to say too much about it i feel like the less you know the better but I like this movie so much that I'm literally considering getting a tattoo based on it. Like, that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> this movie was – the ending, like, just sticks with you. Like, the ending is what makes the movie a masterpiece to me. Um, the whole movie itself is great, but, like, the ending in particular is very powerful, um, to me at least. And it's it's uh, it's a lot. It's, it's sort of a very graphic movie for its time. Um, it involves face surgery which, you know, sounds pretty brutal, but, you know, it's not super graphic um, by today's standards. But, man, this is a very innovative film, I'm telling you. Like, the, the it's very well done. You know, it's black and white, but the performances in here are excellent. And it, I don't know what it is. It just really stuck with me. Um, definitely recommend it for anybody to check out. Um, it's from 1960, so it's a little bit older. But um, next is The Green Mile. And this is another one I've heard. It's a masterpiece. And this was my number one for quite some time on this list. Um, it, it eventually moved down, but, you know, it's still number two. And this is uh, Frank Darabont, who directed Shawshank Redemption. This is another prison film based on a uh, Stephen King book. And, wow, this was another masterpiece. Um, <laughs> my God, this movie is very emotional. Um, in some ways, it's better than Shawshank, but that's crazy to say. Um, I still like Shawshank more. But in certain aspects, like the emotional beats, um, Tom Hanks, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, like everybody in this movie – like this, this is a three-hour epic. Um, oh, I don't know if people call it an epic, but to me, it's epic. And I'm telling you, like, it, it's such an experience the first time seeing this, um, not knowing what happens. Um, I mean, I kind of knew uh, what happens at the end, but so much of this movie, I had no idea what it was. And oh my god, I I'm so glad I finally saw it. Um, have you seen it before? Well, I have it on Blu-ray, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's it's three hours, and people have complained like it's too long. I didn't think it was anything needed to be cut out per se, but I could see what people are saying, sort of. Um, but I'm telling you, man, this is one of the greats for sure. Um, man, it's very emotional. Um, so number one, this might surprise some people because this is a movie. A lot of people, you know, like this movie, but like they wouldn't hold it in such a high regard, probably. Um, Rumblefish. This movie is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, again, who directed The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, um, based on the novel by, uh, I believe S.E. Hinton, who wrote, uh, The Outsiders. Again, he directed The Outsiders as well. Um, this movie, the filmmaking in this movie was so freaking good. The cinematography was so freaking good, I'm telling you. That's the main, I, it might sound silly, but, like, that's literally the main thing 
that made it number one for me. The cinematography was incredibly good for its time. Like the shots in this movie, like over the last couple of years, I sort of like became appreciative of, you know, camera work. Like beforehand, I was just a movie fan. Like I didn't really look at all that stuff, like the technical stuff. Like cinematography to me is like, it's like 90% of the movie now. Like if a movie doesn't have good cinematography, I'm just like, okay, whatever. But like, the shots in this movie, the black and white, like everything about it is it's literally like looking at a piece of art. Um, Matt Dillon and Mickey Rourke are the main guys in this movie. They kill it as they're in their roles. I'm a huge Mickey Rourke fan, um, as, as, except for Iron Man 2. Um, <laughs> but man, like this movie was I, again, I don't think most people would look at it the same way I'm looking at it. But like watching this was as a fan of film, like it was so well done, like I don't know. It's a simple story. It's it's also sort of coming of age. Um, I never read the original book or anything like that, but I'm telling you, like, to me, this was an experience like Nicolas Cage is in it, too, like a very young Nicolas Cage. Um, uh, Chris Penn's in there, Dennis Hopper. Um, but yeah, it's it's something I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I'm telling you, like, I don't know what it was. Something about this one was special to me. Um it just it just really spoke to me. I don't know what it is. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm being kind of vague, but there's something about the movie that I personally related to that. I really I'm not going to delve into, but it really hit me in the feels. Um, yeah. So. All right. That's my list. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, any of those you want to check out um, that I mentioned? All of them. All of them? <laughs> Yeah, especially Crash. Um, yeah, special commentary coming soon. No. All right. So that was a lot of movies. Lots. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess we'll talk about uh, Doctor Strange and the Mom. No, we have Moon Knight. Oh yeah. So again, it's been three months. There's other things that came out too. Moon Knight came out. Um, what the hell else? Came Oh, just Marvel? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And I remember you, you had a little bit of a hot take on Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. Are you away from your computer? Because you sound very distant. No, I'm still near mine. You sounded kind of muffled, actually. Oh, you hear me better? No, now you sound better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well... I mean, it's funny because when we first when we first started making this podcast, it was right before the WandaVision finale, and me and you were like, "Man, WandaVision's gonna be crazy. It's gonna tie into the Spider Man, and then Doctor Strange. Like, this is gonna be like the crazy movies." And now all three are out. So, like, mm -hmm. kind of thinking about that, I think it's it, it works well for the anniversary of this podcast. That's true. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. Doctor Strange. Actually, no, wait, I'm sorry. Moon Knight. Uh, yeah, no, like, um, I, I think that people love it. Um, and as a person who likes the character, uh, I, I definitely think this, the, like, I, I guess the second half kind of carried it. Like, don't get me wrong, I like the first episode or two. It's just there. I, the thing I, I think the problem I have with it is that it feels like there's too much going on and not enough breathing room. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It feels like if you don't know anything at all, like you're just left in the dust. Like you, like there, there's. I'm usually a fan of not like of movies not specifically telling you things right away and kind of like eventually like having it figured out, kind of a, a, you know revealed. But this is like it feels like it kind of just throws you in, doesn't explain shit, and it's just like okay, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like and it's just a, like it just feels like a like a I guess like it, it's not exposition but it feels like an exposition dump where just like it just all just kind of just happens and you're like okay like it doesn't really do anything because I don't get it like honestly, I understood it a bit more but even then I was like okay this is way too much going on right now it definitely needs to pump the brakes a bit mm -hmm. and it does um it does after I, I'd say about episode three. Uh, I'd say episode three, four, and five are the better episodes. I love yeah. episode five. Episode five, I think, is one of the better Disney plus MCU episodes. Um, yes. But uh, the finale was okay. Like, it was <laughs> all right. I feel like it was a bit rushed. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I mean, it's not bad. I gave it, I think it three and a half stars. Yeah. So yeah, it was fine. Yeah, me too. Like I'm also not like loving it as much as other people are, but like for me, the standout was Oscar Isaac. Like my God, oh, yeah. this man is an actor. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I think I gave it, I don't know if I gave it four. I think I gave it four stars. Let me check real quick. Yeah. Um, it's four and a half. Yeah, I'm pretty generous. But no, it was really well done. Again, it's not like a super tie-in thing to everything MCU. It's, it's pretty much standalone. But again, Oscar Isaac killed it. Ethan Hawke killed it. The the main actress in there, I forget her name, she killed it too. Um, but yeah, very good series uh, overall. If it's a mini series, I don't know if they're going to do a season two, but whatever. We'll see what happens. Um, so let's get into Doctor Strange and the Mom. <laughs> This might be surprising, but this is me and your favorite MCU movie. Yes, and I'm glad. Like, I was surprised that you put it number one, too. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I knew you'd like it, but I didn't know you put it number one like I did. That's crazy. So, yeah. I've I've seen more negative towards it than I have positive, which it it hurts to see. Yes. Uh, But this movie just really connected with me, and... I loved it. Like, I genuinely just loved it. Um, I, I guess I mean, kind of, I don't know where we began because, like, it's a movie that we both just really like, but there's just so much to talk about. Um, well, the, the thing I want, we mentioned to each other is, like, most people were disappointed. There weren't 600 cameos. And again, again, as fans of the MCU, are we a little disappointed by that? Yeah, but, like, I'm not going to let it detract from the overall film. It's not like the film promised us that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so would i've liked to see more cameos yeah who wouldn't but like the film itself it's it's wholly unique to the mcu like this is a sam raimi film 100 percent, which i really love the fact they did that so i guess we can talk about the the negatives that i keep seeing constantly pop up when we kind of counter argue i guess mm-hmm. um I, the biggest thing is everyone complains about the writing. Everyone keeps saying the writing is terrible. What do you think about that? Do they mean like the dialogue? Is that what they mean? So like like just the, the script, I guess. Oh, just like the yeah. overall like plot of the film. No, I mean it's pretty much a horror movie. Like she's literally a movie monster trying to kill them. Like that, it's a horror movie. Um, yeah. I think it works fine. Like they do travel the multiverse. Um, he gets confronted by the Illuminati, which is really cool. Um. No, I think it's fine. Like, Doctor Strange has a character arc, you know, like, he can't, you know, him and um, Christine, they'll never fall in love with each other in any universe, and he learns to accept that and moves on from that. Um, and, you know, he holds responsibility for giving Thanos the time stone, and, you know, I like that they gave him an arc like that, and they also gave uh, America Chavez an arc. Um, and Wanda, oh my god, like, she's literally, if she's arguably the best MCU villain. Like, I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> She's the best too. She's literally my favorite, like current MCU character. That's crazy. She's your favorite for I'm, both. Yeah, like I'm literally like a huge Wanda stand right now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> She's. I'm really considering putting her as my favorite villain. Um, favorite hero? No, I wouldn't say that. But like, she's definitely. You know, I mean, like her. current MCU, like with oh current people yeah. who, are, yeah, like it used to be Captain America, but now that he's kind of gone, it's right. definitely I think current Wanda. Yeah. Um, again, people complaining about the scripts. I don't know. I didn't really see any issues. They said the writing's clunky. The dialogue sucks. And I'm like, I mean, I don't, I don't see it. Again, my biggest issue with the movie is silly. It's the third eye. I thought the CGI on the third eye looks horrendous. <laughs> but like, that's literally my only thing I didn't like. Like everything else to me was, again, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, and this was an Evil Dead Marvel movie to me. So I. I I don't know what to say. Like, I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and it's funny you mentioned the arc thing because people complained about the arcs as well. Um, they say that Dr. Strange basically doesn't have one in the movie, <laughs> but no, he doesn't really do much. And I'm like, I don't, did we watch the same movie? Like, I know. I don't know if it's because he doesn't like blatantly like have like this life changing thing for him. It's kind of more subtle, like he just accepts his fate and learns to open up more. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that works for the movie that's trying to tell, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And also, um, 
what was I going to say? Damn, I, I literally just totally forgot what I was going to say. But, uh, shit, what was I going to say? Oh, my God. I, like, had this good point ready to go. Um, oh, me and you are both fans of Iron Man 3. That should tell you everything right there, anybody listening. Like, <laughs> yeah. We, like, we can see when they're making a character study movie. Like, this is literally, like, Iron Man 3 is a character study on Tony Stark. It really, it, it is. And people didn't like it because it wasn't full of Iron Man action. And he wasn't in this. And like, same thing with this movie. It's not just full of just 2000s cameos. Yeah, right. Character. Even though, again, I would have liked the scene. Sure, of course, who wouldn't? But, like, I'm not going to, like, let that detract from the overall film that we got. And, again, this was a film, like... Sam Raimi's written all over it. The cinematography, like everything, the music by Danny Elfman. Like, again, it's not copy and paste by any stretch of the imagination, which, again, I, that's what I'm looking for mostly. Um, he makes a kid like demon. You're like, come on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, again, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I did the full review. So, like, I don't know if, if anybody like, didn't understand what I was trying to say, but like, to me, I, out of all the movies, this is the most unique. And again, I've only seen it once at this point. Maybe it could change on my list at some point. I don't know. But it, it's to me, it's the best one, like the best one I've watched. Like, I, I really enjoyed it. It wasn't super hype coming out of it, but like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And I've seen some people complain about Wanda saying that it's basically just kind of makes one division a little pointless because she basically goes and goes against everything she learned in that movie but like here's my thing she's been doing that since age of ultron like <laughs> she she essentially like will get her emotions and her feelings and let it get to her head and get you know let, let it affect her and then she learns to do good at the end like it's literally been her arc since age of ultron like when she, you know, worked for Ultron because she hated Iron Man and joined Hydra, and then boom, she joins the Avengers because she realizes what she's doing is wrong. Right. And it's not really present in Civil War, just a little bit. I mean, she pulls up the building on accident, but then in WandaVision, like she just, you know, obviously she lost everything, everyone, Lily had nothing, let her emotions get to her mm -hmm. once again, and eventually realized what she was doing and fixed it. So it makes sense that the Dark Hold, when she would read it, would literally take advantage of that. And yes. like then that's been always been her biggest flaw. It would make her revert back to that. The only difference is that now it's just a little more extra. And again, yeah. they even say it's not even Wanda, it's the Scarlet Witch now. Like it just completely took over her. Right. Um, so I don't I don't really think it like reverted the character back to what it was in WandaVision, especially because she is, you know, seen reading the Dark Hold. And it makes sense for her to read the dark hole because it's the only thing talking about her powers. Right. So like, I don't, I, I don't get that complaint. I thought like her arc worked perfectly fine. And now she's kind of free of that Scarlet Witch type of, you know, I guess control and the dark hole. And, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I, I also say this, like, she's definitely, this is definitely a tragedy. Like her, this, she's a tragic character in both WandaVision and this, but like, like you mentioned, yeah. I feel like WandaVision was the end of Wanda. This was the beginning of Scarlet Witch. So, like, it's a totally different thing because now she's dealing with chaos magic. It's pretty much taking over her. Like, she's becoming literally a witch. So, like, she's totally different at the start of this movie. Like, she's evil now, basically. So, I think that's what that was. Like, her character arc sort of ended at WandaVision. But, like, now she's become this whole new entity in this. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then at the end of this, obviously, she realizes what a monster she's become. And, you know, um, I hope she's not dead. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's asked, do you think do you think they killed her off? I don't think so. No. I mean, even if they did, they could obviously just use a variance or whatever, like use a different Wanda. But like I really hope this Wanda's not dead. Um, I don't know if they did. I I think they purposely like didn't like, you know, fully I mean, also say. when the when the rubble crushes, you just see that black that bright glowing red. Yeah. I feel like maybe that'd be like they might use that as like, oh, she teleported away or something like that. Yeah, again, they didn't make it like a final like they didn't give any finality to it i think they did it on purpose because they don't know what they're going to do next probably so they didn't want to say if she's dead or not so i'm, I'm thinking they I mean, don't even know. there is an agatha show coming out and right. i don't know if you would want to do that without at least even showing wanda at least like once like so right. i don't I well don't know. yeah i mean i don't know because i don't know if that's going to take place back in the day with Agatha, yeah, Agatha as yeah, know, it just depends on what the story. If it takes place in present, then yeah. But if it's like 
prequel then i don't think so right i th- i'm pretty sure they're gonna do a prequel maybe part prequel and sequel they're gonna pull a better call Saul. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um but yeah uh again 10 out of 10 for me like i don't know i'm i'm crazy i guess <laughs> yeah so they had the horror vibes it yeah was, i've I, not to mention i've seen it three times already dude. right which is crazy i've only seen it once still but yeah. uh yeah so that that's kind of solidified as my as my favorite and it's okay. just it's just so good like it's just <laughs> quick to the point cool uh yeah i mean i don't i'm team Scarlet Witch of the whole movie like i'm just down for it like it's just yeah yeah, I guess I could say I was Team Scarlet Witch too, even though I understood like what she was doing was pretty <laughs> uh, pr- pretty screwed up. But like I was definitely on her yeah. side. Yeah. So, yeah, man, a great villain can make a movie. I'm telling you. Like, again, the best part of Black Panther is Killmonger. Like I always say that. Like you know what I mean? So. I mean, I don't agree with that. I know you're not like as big as a fan of Black Panther as I am, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. Um, anything else for uh? for Doctor Strange and the mom? Uh, the great decision to release it Mother's Day weekend because it's a, it's a mother movie. Yeah, and he's in the mom. Yeah, and everyone is making fun of the cringy Billy and Tommy ice cream song and it's funny. Why are they making fun of that? I was I, That was actually like a really emotional moment for me. Because they were just like, they, they said that that's like the most like secondhand embarrassment like movie scene ever whatever i thought it was a kid's I, I thought that was like the point though like yeah i feel like that was intentional i don't know well wait don't, i've only seen it once that's the scene where she like first sees them like she goes into the she dream walks and then sees them <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i'm saying that was like a very emotional scene yeah whatever the uh, people suck <laughs> i don't know <laughs> they're i guess they're maybe they're expecting them to start like dropping some actual bars but oh they, my they god did. Uh, all right um it is 4 30 in the morning <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it's crazy that i'm doing this shit right now um, well i'm glad we're doing it finally you know what i mean so yeah um, and i guess uh, i'll end with this uh one last thing i met brian cranston and aaron paul and uh all right yeah that was uh man so that was unexpected. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but they actually have their own liquor that they sell called Dos Hombres. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were like doing this promotional tour. So like they're going around to different states, like promoting it. You know, you can meet them at bars or, or not bars, um, liquor stores. And they'd sign the thing for you or whatever, take pictures with you. Mm-hmm. So they were in Orlando the other day and then they were in Tampa and then they were going to be in Miami. And I didn't know about this, by the way, until literally the night before. Like I was up late and I come home from work and I was just scrolling through Instagram and I saw they posted, Hey, we're going to be in Miami tomorrow. And I was like, what the hell? Like, I definitely want to go, go see them. Um, so I texted my friend Rob about it literally at like four in the morning um, because that's when I found out. And yeah, a couple hours later we drove there and we met them and dude, it was insane. Like they took a picture with me with my tattoo and man, Brian Cranston took a picture of me and him with my tattoo like on his personal phone and he has it like he has the photo which is insane on to me. his phone yeah on his personal phone um which i couldn't believe and yeah dude it's crazy when you walk up to them they're like because when you see people on 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 a screen like they seem so much bigger like you see them they're like normal size human beings yeah. like you know what i mean like aaron paul yeah. was like tiny compared to me you know what i mean because i'm you know i'm like 200 pounds so like i guess i'm bigger but dude it was it was insane being right up with them and they're so nice they uh, weren't allowed to sign anything, unfortunately. Like, I brought my barrel, my Blu-ray barrel set. <laughs> I literally brought it so they could sign it, but they weren't allowed to. So, but, man, it was it was crazy, dude. Like, we were so hype afterwards. Like, all our friends were calling us and texting us about it. Like, dude, holy crap. Like, because we posted about it without saying anything. We just literally posted the pictures on our Instagrams, and people were, like, going crazy. Um, <laughs> dude, it was insane. It was, like, one of those once-in-a-lifetime moments. Like, I'm so glad I did it. Um yeah. yeah so that's so cool hopefully you just plugged funko street i know i should have i should have said something like hey could you do <laughs> something for my youtube i don't know um i mean some the guy that, that was there taking the photos for us like he did a little quick video on my phone i post i don't know if you saw it on my youtube but i uploaded it um, yeah yeah 
Um, oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed my April Fool's video. Did you watch it? I did. Oh, you did? Okay. Because I never saw a comment for you. I was like wondering. like, I thought I, I, thought I DM'd you, no? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I thought I made like, a little comment about the napkin. I don't know. Yeah. I, I swear I thought I left something. <laughs> uh, I guess I didn't. I don't know. Yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so people were pissed about that, but I was like, hey, come on, it's April Fool's. Um, I, I always wanted to do an April Fool's video. I just never knew what to do. So, um. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you met you met a uh, guy from Godzilla. I met Iron Man. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You met Iron Man at a yeah, California Adventure, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was through Iron Man. He was like, we're doing business. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah, he was just telling me how much he loves, he loves Funko Street. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I watch that shit all the time. I never had like, Iron yeah, Man. I, on. I never had Iron Man on there. I bet he was really upset about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, he he's like, yeah. I mean, they put Deadpool in there, but I guess it's yeah. fine. Mm. He said he was a he said he was a big fan. He said he was a big fan of of Cthulhu. Yeah, Cthulhu. <laughs> God, I so yeah, I, no, I really no. I really want to go back and like remake the first dub episodes. It. Yeah, or just redub it. Yeah. Oh boy, man, Chithulu. Chithulu. yeah, I know, Ugh. but uh, you know, it is what it is. That's what that that gives it charm. You know what I mean? That there's little there's a little bit of charm to the first two episodes because how poorly made they were. Um, yeah. Which um, I uh, I ha- Funko Funko Black. There there is a little joke about that. Just to let you know. All right, I'm all about the inside jokes. I'm all about it. So, what's the prog? Yeah, what's the progress looking like on the show? Epic. Okay. It's. I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave it out there. I'm just gonna leave it. It's epic. And again, what's the time frame? We think in summer. We think in fall. It will be out at some point. At some point. During an epic time. Okay. Did you know that Morbius is a movie? uh no i didn't actually <laughs> to be I honest i know it's a i know it's a piece of art but i don't know if it's like a movie whoa piece of art no man i was gonna call yeah. it top 10 of the year <laughs> because i've only seen 10 movies this year ha 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 no i'm just kidding uh-huh. yeah. uh-huh. i mean if you've only seen 10 movies this year i mean technically it's top 10 yeah i think i've seen how many have i seen i don't even know but uh yeah more movies is a movie uh, so what should we title this one? Chithuli. Just that. Yeah. Should I spell it like differently so it sounds like Chithulu? Uh, well, you can't even like I don't know. Oh, so I've only seen ten movies of two ten twenty twenty two movies. <laughs> so Morbius <laughs> is in my top ten of this year. Yeah, I. I, I oh man that is uh that's that's something <sighs> god i don't know i think the title um, should have to do with mid or morbius uh the more the more billy is special i don't know <laughs> no no i'll think of something all right uh, um yeah. i think that's gonna wrap it up probably at our four four forty in the morning yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it's the evening somewhere. So like you're you're early. We're we're doing this at a good time right now, in like yeah. Australia. Yeah, right. Well, I'm probably this probably. I don't know if I'm gonna upload this today because I want to put the liquor's pizza video up, and then maybe for one, or Wednesday I'll put up this podcast. And we actually have way. to edit this. Yeah, that, yeah, I don't care. Like you're the editor here. I don't, I'm just. Yeah, this will be up Wednesday. I'm just, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm just a co-host. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, um, all right. I guess that wraps it up. I'm Tyler. I'm Aaron. Oh, you can, you know, you can totally clickbait this. I'm like, Tyler goes to jail. <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Last minute, like, awesome title right there. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's been the mid, mid, uh, mid podcast popping off me hopefully that was enough i mean yeah we go through all the whole list of movies so i guess that works for the the special i guess i don't know yeah that's true
guys it is it is late at night we we are we are just talking out of our ass right now yeah and and, and burping are and releasing just, gas from our yeah. and this is how you bookend it i just tasted arby's so that's how you bookend the podcast i tasted yeah. it in my burp cut it, you should have just cut it like right there <laughs> I mean, I, I still could. No, I'm just yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. More by, more, more be, more be <laughs> later. This is like a two-hour podcast at the at the minimum. Yeah.